What a summer it should be. ABC Sports Touring America and journeying across the sea to bring you the great golf championships of the world. The U.S. and British Opens, the PGA Championship, the Women's Open, and the U.S. Amateur. A summertime of golf to remember. It is one of the shrines of the sport of golf. The clubhouse at Wingfoot in Mamaroneck, New York. The spiked shoes of the game's great personalities have clattered through the locker room since the flamboyant days of the Roaring Twenties, when the layout was designed by the irascible genius of golf course design, A.W. Tillinghast. In 1929, Bobby Jones won the first U.S. Open played here, defeating Al Espinosa in a playoff. Thirty years later, Billy Casper put on a masterful putting performance to edge Bob Rossberg. And in 1974, patient Hale Irwin won the title here. Yesterday, it was Irwin again leading the Open, but this time battling hand-to-hand -hand with a personable golfer from Indiana, Fuzzy Zeller. Zeller, a former Masters champion, plays with a deceptive insouciance, apparently as loose as can be, but actually playing with a chronic aching back. Here was his shot to the first green yesterday, a shot that left him with a tap-in for a birdie that tied him for the lead with Irwin. That set the tone for the day. The lead seesawed between the two all the beautiful afternoon, and the play was spectacular, like this chip into the hole by Zeller. The contrast in personalities is a fascinating one. Irwin is going for his third Open Championship, which would leave him only one behind the great foursome of Willie Anderson, Bobby Jones, Ben Hogan, and Jack Nicklaus. His approach is quiet, solid, unflappable. He's at his best on the great golf courses, and his competitiveness reflects his background as a college football player. Time and again yesterday, he made putts like this to move ahead with a birdie or to rescue par and hold steady. On this Father's Day, each of the two men battling head-to-head -head is the father of two children. But this is at least a three-way battle. A man from down under, Greg Norman, known as the Great White Shark, also is in the fight. The shark actually is the loving father of a baby girl, but on the fairways, he has sharp teeth and shows them early white. The National Championship of American Golf is on the line, and the issue is very much in doubt. Live picture now as we prepare to follow the final pair all the way around from hole one through hole 18, the final 18 of the 84th United States Open. That will be Hale Irwin and Fuzzy Zeller. They played together all yesterday. They'll do it again today on the shores of Long Island Sound. The weather different than yesterday, more humid, overcast instead of the beautiful sunshine, threat of rain, but still playing conditions could be even better for the master professionals and amateurs of the world who have gathered here. Here's how they stand at this moment, Irwin by one over Zeller, Greg Norman one further behind, and then Jim Thorpe. Only those four under par, and only those four have yet to tee off. Notice, however, that Jack Nicklaus still lurks, and although he is seven shots behind, there are only five men between him and the lead. Stranger things have happened. Johnny Miller also there. Have a look at some of the other leaders, those on the golf course who have moved further ahead. Hal Sutton, notice, he is four under par for the day, although still four over for the championship, an indication that perhaps there are fine rounds yet to come. Temperature, as I said, 67 degrees, the same as yesterday, actually. Humidity much higher. The wind negligible could be a factor there for high sc or low scores. And the chance of rain, however, two to one in favor of the rain before the afternoon is done. Now, here are some of the pairings. You see them. The last one, as you know, is Zeller and Irwin. The others up ahead, Thorpe and Norman and so on. There you see Johnny Miller. There you see uh, Fred, uh, Aoki of Japan. Some of the pairings that you will be seeing during the course of this four-hour telecast. The front nine, well, there it is. It has two par threes, but only one par five, and that reachable for some of the longer hitters at 515 yards. Long par fours on this course are a big part of the story. Now back to the first tee again where the two finalists await this challenge. It will be head-to-head -head again today. They played all 18 yesterday, and afterwards we talked to them, wondering how it was to play with one man all the way at the final 36. Well, Fuzzy is a delight to play with. He keeps things pretty loose. Uh, he always draws a very enthusiastic gallery, and we, we had a good time today. There were some times, I think, where the enthusiasm got a little strong and a, a bit out of place at times, but all in all, it's a, it's a delight and an experience playing with Fuzzy. So said Hale Irwin, the unflappable one. What about Fuzzy, the man who stays loose, who chats with the spectators and smiles all the way, whether he's hurting or not? I think it's good for me to play with a guy like Hale. He is a, such a competitor and uh, I think a great thinker. Now, if I get out there and start getting a little errant or something, I'm going to observe. 
you know, I'll try to keep my ball in the fairway and observe the way Hale's playing. Uh, hopefully I don't get tied up in the way he's playing if he makes starts making a lot of birdies. But uh, again, you know, I've, I've played out here 10 years with these guys. I know Hale and played with him a long time. Uh, it's just, like I say, it's just a great thrill and honor to be in a position to uh, have a chance to win the U.S. Open. Well, there are millions of you out there who have aching backs like Fuzzy Zeller has much of the time. The final pairing. The referee is Jim Hand, president of the United States Golf Association from Ossining, New York. The observer is Kim Whitney, a member of the USGA Executive Committee from Wyzetta, Minnesota. The special observer is John Salveson, the captain of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, Scotland. The players are Fuzzy Zeller, New Albany, Indiana. <laughs> States Open champion of 1974 and 1979, Hale Irwin, Kapalua, Maui, Hawaii. Get it, get it. Mr. Zeller has the honor. Play away, please. They say play well, Hale, I believe. Fuzzy Zeller. Started to say, if you have a bad back, it might help you playing to wear a sweater, no matter how warm it is. That's what he does. Remember, Art Wall always did that, who also had that problem. There it is. Just ju Hale, caught the rough and then came back out again. And he's not up against the collar. Those three inches could make quite a difference on that shot. Could have been much more difficult for him. Now, Hale Irwin. At age 39, trying to duplicate what he did at age 29 to win the U.S. Open on this golf course at wing foot. Only twice has a man won U.S. Opens the consecutive times it was played on the same course. Willie Anderson at Myopia Hunt Club, Jack Nicholas at Baltus Roll. And this is not a very good drive to open up with. It's a low hook and it's going to be very short in the rough behind a tree. Boy, how many of you club golfers have done that off the first tee when there were three people around, let alone the kind of gallery and importance that they have here today. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay reporting from Wingfoot. And before we get into this afternoon of celebration, unfortunately, those of us at ABC Sports, and I think everybody in the world of sport, has been saddened today. It's something that's tough to get out of your mind. Today at the Belmont Park racetrack, not far from here, across Long Island Sound, the great horse Swale, the winner of this year's Kentucky Derby, after a fine morning meal and an easy gallop of a mile and a half, preparing for his morning bath, suddenly reared on his hind legs, suffered a massive heart attack, apparently, and died. Swale is dead at the age of three. Winner of the Kentucky Derby, winner of the Belmont. And, you know, those of us who are involved a bit with horses, as I am, as Bob Rosberg is, as Jack Whitaker is, uh, find it hard to communicate to you how badly you can feel for the horse and for the people involved with him when it is an animal that died this morning. But we feel very much for Seth Hancock and all the Hancock family of Claiborne Farm and for Woody Stevens, his Hall of Fame trainer, man who's had such an up-and-down year with first Devil's Bag and now with Swale. It's a real tragedy for the world of sport. Uh, the autopsy is to be conducted sometime this afternoon. We'll stay on top of the story. If there are any further developments, we'll let you know about it. But as I said, here at Wingfoot, it is in fact an afternoon of celebration. So let's bring in a man who once celebrated his own PGA Golf Championship, former captain of the United States Ryder Cup team, and important in this context, as we said yesterday, at one time the assistant pro here for three years, Dave Marr, of course. Well, it's going to be a day. It can be, Jim, because uh, you've got three very tough players there, and so much depends on the start. The first four holes at Wingfoot are very difficult to get any kind of start on. Uh, looks like the advantage goes to Fuzzy because of those two drives. It's going to depend on what kind of lie Hale, uh, Hale has in that tall rough. Outside chance, yeah, maybe Nicholas, maybe Trevino. Uh, they, they've won before. There's not very many players between them and the lead, but I really don't look for that. I think it's a three-horse race. Well, now, you've played this course so many times, particularly when you were here as an assistant. You've had every conceivable lie. You've been under every tree, but you've made great putts everywhere also. Uh, how do you think the golf course is holding up? What's your overall impression about the course versus the field? Well, I'm very pleased that they set the course up the way they did this year. There was a lot of talk the first part of the week about, well, it's a lot easier and harumph. They're not really making it wing foot tough. 
it was, I thought, unfair in 74, and I said so, and some of the people were, were kind of mad at me for a while. <laughs> Let the players go play. This is very fair. No one's really torn it up. These are the greatest players in the world, and in 10 years, competition has gotten that much tougher. You've got, by sheer weight of numbers, players that can go out and shoot under par. Wingfoot has every reason to be proud of that golf course. It hasn't changed, and it always will be a great one. Okay, let's go back out on the fairways. Now, there you see where Hale Irwin went with that kind of look like sort of a plain old snap hook, doesn't it? Into the rough. And Bob Rosberg is out there with the players, as he will be all the way. What's the deal there, Bob? Well, Jim, uh, Hale does not have a very good lie to play the kind of shot he has to play. He has to play another low dive hook to have any chance of running it up on the right edge of the green. Morris Atalski drove it in exactly the same place about 15 minutes ago and made a fast six to start off with. I don't think he can curve the ball enough to get it around the tree. If he tries to hit a low hook, then he takes the chance of leaving it in the rough right in front of him. I think he's going to play very safe and play short of the green to the right. He'd have to hit a shot almost like Lou Graham hit it um, at Southern Hills a few years ago. Well, huh? he 17. doesn't have the lie to hit it, though, Jim. Okay. You need a bare lie for that, and he doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. He's just played it out, but again, he couldn't hook it enough, and it's going into the deep rough oh, to the dear, right. Dear. Tough start. Well, it's sitting up from here. It looks like it's sitting up anyway. You'll get a better look at it, Bob, I'm sure. Uh, so Fuzzy Zeller could really s seize the aggressive very quickly, as he did yesterday. He birdied the first hole yesterday to move into a tie for the lead. Could do the same thing here. Now, Bob Rosberg, as you know now, is with Zeller and Irwin. John Schroeder will be up ahead with Jim Thorpe, who's under par, and Greg Norman, who's in third place and Ed Sneed with Nicholas. Greg Norman just three putted the first hole from very short distance. Got mm. off to another terrible start. As he did yesterday, right? Well, there's Fuzzy Zeller in two. And the man he's hand to hand with is still in the rough on the right hand side. More to come. Today's coverage of the 84th United States Open Golf Championship, an ABC Sports exclusive, is being brought to you by Michelob, one smooth and mellow taste, tells you that some things speak for themselves. By US f and Insurance, protecting your business, auto, and life all across the USA. By Lincoln Mercury, offering a complete range of quality automobiles for 1984. From front-wheel drive cars to three distinct luxury models, everything from Lynx to Lincoln. And by De Beers, the name that stands for diamonds, the perfect gift for any occasion. A diamond is forever. Back at Wingfoot for the final round of the United States Open. There's a situation as it stands now. Both Norman and Thorpe have lost strokes to par. There are the rest of them. And we're just underway with the final group, the leaders. This was moments ago, Hale Irwin's third shot at the first hole, a par four, from the rough on the right, just short of the green. Oh, they're fast, aren't they? And he is up above. David, that's <laughs> another one of those putts you don't want to open up with, do you? He's getting off to a shaky oh. start. He did that, I believe, the first round, Jack. He made about a five-footer for a five. After getting caught in that traffic, he said that may have been the best putt he made all day. Mm. But this is a treacherous putt he has. Now we go on the second fairway. Greg Norman's second shot. He bogeyed the first hole to drop back to two under. Three shots off Hale. Now puts it on the green, pin high, but he'll have that putt. Now fuzzy at the first hole. He has a nice uphill putt. He should have no trouble in, trouble in getting a par here at the opening hole. You notice what he did there, Jack. He sort of looked at Hale, and I'm sure Hale said, do you want to put out? And mm -hmm. Fuzzy said, well, I might be in your line. And that's important because Hale is more than likely going to put the ball by the hole going down that hill so fast. So Fuzzy did not want to stand in his about-to-be future line down the hill. Yes. Let's take a good look at this to give us some indication of the speed of these greens. I think they dried out overnight a lot more. So they should be a little swifter than yesterday. All 
rather serious beginning for the leader after three rounds Hale Irwin. So have some break to it too. Well you've had that putt before. Oh. <laughs> you know that's like your Monday morning deal. That's you don't want to open up with this do Ooh. you. Just touched it. There's the break. But very good speed. So bogey five it could have been worse. But that ties them up again. My goodness how many times have they been <laughs> deadlocked here in these yesterday and now today of the very first hole. Hale drops to four under. The bogey here at number one. Fuzzy has this for par. To stay at four under. So co leaders once again, Zeller and Irwin. If they move over to the par four second hole. This is, of course, Jack Nicholas in the rough at four. John Schroeder, what's the story? I'm sorry, it is Ed Sneed. Jack, his, his lie isn't too bad over there. I don't think uh, he'll have a problem getting to the green. It, it's, it's a little bit thick, but uh, a player as strong as Jack can get through that rough. It's just a question of getting it through the opening. Yes, you have to have those thick wrists, don't you? Huh? Well, the pin is sitting on the right side behind the bunker. I, I would say there's almost no chance that he could get the ball close to the hole, but uh, he, he can run it into the center of the green if he if he can just bounce it through that opening. How's he been playing? Ed? He's played beautifully the first three holes. He hasn't missed a golf shot, and he's come come close on one of the birdie putts he had. the right swing is that what he said Sam? that's what he said Jack uh, I I think he just had vis he's visualized a shot yep. and as he stood over the ball he realized that he wasn't lying up to hit the shot that he was preparing for so he stepped away Sure, and he has a rather delicate chip here. It doesn't look like he has much uh, green to work with there. So that's Jack Nicholas' second shot on the par four fourth hole. And we asked Jack a little earlier how he compared himself now to how it used to be. I don't hit the ball quite as far as I used to. I don't overpower the golf courses like I used to. But as far as overall shot, shot making, as far as my short game, as far as my overall thinking, I think I'm a better player today than I ever was from those standpoints. But it's that I have a harder time mentally with it. Yeah. I have a harder time uh, preparing myself because I don't play as much golf as I used to. And if I play too much, I get uh, complacent, as I said earlier. Uh, it's, it's harder for me. I, that's why I reduced my schedule. I, was, I didn't want to burn myself out. And yet, it's, it's counterproductive sometimes because I don't play enough golf to be ready. But, I, but if I play more, <laughs> then I get stale, and it's, it's a very, very difficult situation. Rather objective look at himself by Jack Nicholas. This is, of course, Fuzzy Zeller's second hole. They're as back as far as they can get on that tee. Dog legs right, so you want to be over on the left part of the fairway. You don't want to be in the right rough. That is the Z position. Oh, boy. Um, Rossi? This ball is not good at all, Jack. Uh, it's uh, just short of a very low hanging tree with a lot of rough. He does not have the kind of lie where he can play a real shot that he wants to. I don't think he can get the ball on the green. To tell you. He gets that ball on the green, Rossi. That'll be a miracle. 
Well, he could get it on the left front, Dave, if he hit it absolutely perfectly. But I think if he carries the rough that he's got to go over, I think the ball is going to run through the green. All right, Hale on the right side of the fairway at two. Your co-leaders, Irwin and Seller at four under, and we'll return to Wingfoot in just a moment. We're out on the second hole with the joint leaders, Hale Irwin and Fuzzy Zeller, about to play their second shots. Hale Irwin from the fairway, and Fuzzy from under the shady oaks there on the right. Hale Irwin dropped a stroke at the first hole. All caused really by a, a poor opening tee shot. Here he is now with his second shot over the bunker at the second. The hole's cut very close to the bunker and coming down wind is going to be very, very hard to get it close to the hole. Although this is a beautiful shot. Look at that. Oh, no more than six, seven feet from the hole. That's a, a majestic stroke there from Irwin. Just the sort of counter, counter punch you want after uh, a shaky five at the first hole. Jack Nicholas at the fourth. He was short in two. I don't know how his balls got to here. As he was just short of that bunker, unless it pitched and hit the flag and ricocheted away. Ed Sneed's been there. What happened to his third there, Ed? Shot away from the hole. Uh, he had a downhill lie in the fairway, and I guess he figured that he could not loft the ball in the air, carry the bunker, and, and stop the ball on the green. So he actually played to the left of the bunker and just ran the ball into the middle of the green. So just uh, almost settled for a bogey five there and then. Well, Jack Nicholas is playing with another of the nation's or the world's great players, Lee Trevino, who opened up by dropping strokes at the first and second holes. In fact, of the eight players, the last four groups, only three of these great players have managed to get par fours at the first hole. And so Trevino started at two over par, now four over here on the fourth hole. Morris Sapelski, in fact, started seven, four, four. That's another stroke dropped at the par three, third hole. Jim Thorpe dropped a stroke at the opening hole. Greg Norman did, and so did Hale Irwin. But this is Trevino. Nice roll. Oh, ran out of steam. Back to Mr. Zella on the second hole. It's his third shot. He just had to hack it out across the fairway. He played a shot, Peter, from uh, under the tree, trying to shoot it up by the green into this bunker, and it hit the tree and caromed across the fairway into the rough where he really had no pitch either. Jack Nicholas holds his middle putt, but dropped a stroke at the fourth. Fuzzy looks as if he might drop a stroke here at the second. At the moment, he and Halo are tied at four under. Greg Norman, the next player on the list there, at two under. Nobody making any significant moves so far. And at the moment, it looks as if uh, well, anybody keeping to par or just under at this precise moment is, in fact, uh, making up a bit of ground. Many experts here think that uh, the winning score will perhaps be no more than certainly three under par and more likely to be two under. But of course, there's a lot more golf to be played here today before the champion emerges. Hal Sutton, for example, has three holes to play and is four under the card for the day, four over for the championship. But uh, three fours for 66 shows you it can be done. As we look down, a good year blimp over these green acres and uh, real estate beyond. It is very spectacular. It must be a great feeling to be up there floating about above the world. Here you see the spectators ringing those holes. Just look at that. Back to Greg Norman, the Australian, putting for a birdie three on the third. Sorry, it's, a, it's the third hole. He's putting for a birdie two. Long putt, though.
Pazzi on the left for a par. Fuzzy. Both a shade short. Fuzzy drops a stroke. And Greg Norman will have that three footer for his par. Three at the third. One of the most powerful strikers of the ball, Greg Norman, hits the ball very high. And if ever a man had a game suited to uh, American conditions, it's this man. He's won events all over the world, Far East Circuit, up in Japan, Europe, South America. And this little testy putt to remain at uh, two under. Well, that was full of confidence, and Norman, one of the few players not to lean on his putter when he picks the ball out of the hole, which no doubt will please the USGA. Halo in on the second for a birdie. Just touched it. Uh, Overborrowed. Well, he'll certainly feel a good chance missed there, although that putt down the hill, well, Dave Maher knows more about these greens than perhaps anybody. But he'll still be a little disappointed at not frightening the hole a little bit more than, the, the, than he did. That's a par, and Hale Irwin now has sole possession of the lead, four under. ABC's Wide World of Sports next Saturday, the WBC World Lightweight Championship. That's Howard Davis, the former United States Olympian, against Edwin Rosario. It'll be live from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Also a special report on the United States track and field trials, getting very, very close to the Olympic Games in Los Angeles now. And these are the final trials that will determine our track and field team, or Peter, as you might say on your side, athletics. That's what it's called. Again, from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida, that's Dr. Jim Maloney at the controls, a PhD, if you will, David, from... Virginia, Vienna, or may, may, they may pronounce it Vienna down there, I'm not sure. Cameraman Billy Sullivan, as always. There we are. There's the, uh, a fine view of the third hole through the trees. The trees here are such a feature of uh, so many of the holes at Wingfoot. And Hale Irwin now the leader by one. 216 yards. Two iron, Bob Rosberg, do you think? Well, at this moment, the hole is playing straight downwind, and this is one hole you don't want to go over. Uh, I would think that maybe uh, Hale is going with a two, maybe a real hard three, because you don't want to miss to the right here. There's our camera behind the green showing you. Always looks so much easier from this end, doesn't it? Big, wide green. You wonder what on earth they're doing, messing about short in the bunkers. Oh, oh. That ball's in the left-hand bunker, but if you want to miss, if you do miss the green, you have to miss to the left here to have any chance. Jack Nicholas at the fifth. Par five. Peter, he's hit that ball to the right, and he's wide of the bunkers to the right and into the gallery a little bit. Fuzzy Zeller at the third. stroke well yesterday they played together and we saw a splendid exhibition of punch and counter punch and it looks as if we may be going to have the same sort of thing today although uh, halo and just turned over on that little well that long iron shot of his so you've heard from peter alice earlier you heard from jack whitaker there's how they stand keep an eye on tim simpson and curtis strange before we do that why don't we meet our other colleagues in person Thank you very much, Jim. Peter, not only do we have a very interesting leaderboard, but it has coughed up a very interesting bunch of personalities. Oh, very much so, and, and four uh, different characters indeed, the four players under par. You've got Hale Irwin, who looks uh, very much like a, a professor, a young mm -hmm. professor, I hasten to add, who goes about everything very clinically and calmly, the bubbly, effervescent Fuzzy Zeller, whistling his way around, 
seemingly not to have a care in the world. The very talented young Australian player, Greg Norman, immensely powerful and uh, very talented. And, of course, Jim Thorpe, who's played so very well over the last, what, two or three championships. He certainly has. And for hunch players out there, Jack Nicholas has won four United States Open titles. He won all four of them on Father's Day. And as a great bookie in your country used to always say, make of that what you will. <laughs> well, Jack, uh, as a member here, are you pleased with the way things have, uh, have gone? Oh, tremendously so. Very proud. We always knew this was a, a great golf course. It, uh, I, if they shot 15 under par, I'd still be proud of the golf course and very much in awe of these tremendous players. These are the best players that have ever played the game. I think the course has stood up magnificently well, and I'm very proud of it. Here, here. All right, let's get back to that golf course now and some more action. And the action is Halo in striding up with his own private thoughts of where he went wrong on that long iron shot to this third green. Pulled it into the uh, sand trap to the left side. And really, I, I, I must just to finish off the conversation I had with Jack earlier, uh, congratulate both the club and the USGA for what I'm sure must have been a possible change of heart because over the, over the 10 years I've been coming to see this championship, there has been enormous criticism by uh, players and, of course, the press that the golf course has been made too difficult, the rough is too long, uh, removing the art of driving the ball from the tee, all sorts of remarks, some of them totally um, legitimate, others perhaps a little groundless. But I think this course is magnificent, it's difficult enough, and all congratulations to the club and its officials and the USGA for making a course that's in, in, immensely fair and I think we may, we may see courses no more difficult than this uh, in the future. And why not? It's like asking Sebastian Coe to run in army boots because he goes too quick or run uphill when doing the mile. It's, uh, it makes a lot of sense, and congratulations, gentlemen. So here's Halo in now. A long way to the top of that bunker and then on to the pin. Well, I must confess, it looked as if he just underhit that a little bit. He stabbed at it. Uh, sand looks a little hard, maybe, but he just didn't follow through quite enough to get the ball to run up to the hole. So, a little bit of a shaky start for most of the players. In fact, the, uh, the best start has been made by young Mr. Tim Simpson, who opened up with three pars. Here's Jack Nicholas, third, playing the fifth hole. And still really not threatening. There you get some idea of the breeze. Quite a bit of breeze and so many trees here, of course. The players on many occasions can be fooled by the strength of the wind. They're sheltered on the tee or the green and the wind can very quickly affect the flight of the ball. Puzzy for birdie two at the third. Looks good too. Oh, what a, what a cruncher. Oh, that'll make you feel better very quickly indeed, a few of those. I don't know what it is about a two at a short hole. It always makes you feel so much better than a, than a four uh, on a par five. Why it should be, I don't know, but uh, it seems to pull your card or score back so much quicker. Can he do it again? He can. So Fuzzy opens up par bogey birdie here's Greg Norman on the fourth second shot Peter this pin is cut very very difficult today front right it's playing slightly downwind from the it's born from the players left it's going to hit a probably a five iron and hit a high cut Good shot. beautiful looking golf shot there Well, that really is most impressive. That's no more than 14 feet away from the hole. And uh, is he uh, swinging nicely, John Schroeder? Is, uh, and what about Jim Thorpe? Well, starting with Jim, Jim is not playing very well today. He's played two magnificent bunker shots on one and three and saved par 
one of the two times, uh, whereas Greg has hit the ball beautifully, and uh, they both each missed very short cuts on one. So the golf course so far has the best of it. This ball's going to the right, and it better get up or he's going to be in the bunker, which in it looks like it is. Yes, in the bunker about flag high, not left with such a difficult shot for men of this caliber. Halo in. The third. This was for a par. Oh, Irwin drops a stroke at the short third hole. And so I wonder how many more surprises we're in for before end of play tonight. Well, stick around, you'll see. Yet another year, we're following Jack Nicholas in the final round of the United States Open Golf Championship. Jack having his problems, however, on the early holes. He started at two over par. He's now three over. He's lost one stroke. As you can, again, look from high overhead, you notice there's, there's no water in this course, actually, that comes into play unless you hit some weird wild shot. And yet it is so difficult. Look at the trees, the trees that grow and expand and hang out more every year. Jack drawing a chuckle from the gallery. Well, they probably warned him to go for it or something. This really is a, one of the deceiving little holes in golf. It's only 324 yards. Take an iron because you want a full wedge into a very small green over a bunker there that's, uh, I guess, had everybody that's ever played here in it one time or another. He didn't look too happy with it. That, just staying in the rough. That is not where you want to be. Looked like he knew it as soon as he hit it. Craig Norman for a birdie on the fourth hole. That could move him to within a stroke of the lead again. Oh. The par four will keep him at two under par, two shots behind Zeller, one behind Irwin. Greg Norman. Now back to Jim Thorpe on tape this time. Remember, put his second shot. He's had bunker problems right along since the beginning, but what a touch. What a touch on that. Well, Peter indicated that that might not be too difficult shot for a player of his caliber. He did, in fact, tap that in for a par. So Jim Thorpe hangs tough. He's still at even par. Four shots out, long way to go. Ah, easy for them to say, sitting there on the terrace, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. That missed a shot all day. Uh, never will. Now, from the fourth hole, we're going to pan across now to somebody's backyard, it looks like to me. Is it not? Yeah. Looking, having a little party, a few guests in for the final round of the Open. But the Wingfoot Club itself having many more guests. 20,000, that's where they cut off the sale of tickets. Uh, they could have had many, many more thousands, but traffic, for one thing, is a problem, and also they don't want it to be a mob scene out here. They just want to have people come out and have some chance at enjoying watching the golf. Now, Hale Irwin on the fourth fairway with his second shot. Trailing by one. And how long a shot does he have, Rossi? About 185 yards, Dave, and I would think he'd go with a four iron, trying to get it up in the air and perhaps cut it, because it's the only way he can get it close. A little downwind. He's aimed it right at the middle of the green with a cut. Oh, that's a good shot. Real good shot. Unless you've played there, you don't know how good a shot that is, do you? Bob. Bob, you must get some vibrations in this Push final round. We'll get into that later. Sorry, we have to watch this shot. We're not sorry we have to watch it. But sorry to interrupt you. Oh, and this is a beautiful looking shot if it's the right distance. It, it is. I just think. Fuzzy Zeller moving along. A little New York music because we're near the big town now. Jack Nicholas, we're back here at Wingfoot for the final round of the United States Open Golf Championship. And 
the Big Bear. A marvelous bunker shot. He's playing the sixth hole. Put his second in the bunker. He is three on, and this hole only 328 yards. Can we talk about it a little bit, David? It is really the thorn in the side, isn't it? When Armour was a member here, Jack, he thought it was the best hole on the golf course. It, it, you look at the scorecard, and you say 324, 328. I birdie that hole. No, you can't. It, just getting it on the green is a pretty good feat in two shots. It's a three or a seven. All right, Hale Irwin. One stroke behind Fuzzy Zeller at the moment. Good roll. <laughs> Trying to shake off these early limpings on the first few holes. This is sort of a local knowledge green, Jack. You don't you don't know how much that green slopes away from you. Unlike many, many golf holes that receive a shot, this one is downhill from the crest of the hill there. That's why the ball runs so much. Now, Fuzzy's ball, from where he is, will break more than he thinks, while Hale's didn't break as much as he thought, just from the two different angles. That's what happened to Greg Norman's ball coming down. He had a good putt there. Yeah, the rolls here are less, uh, more subtle rather than they are in most of the greens. Right. This this one looks flat, and mm -hmm. yet it's uh, from where Fuzzy is a right to left break. Taking a stroke, two stroke lead in the championship. Marvelous birdie by Fuzzy Zeller at the fourth hole. That really helps a lot, too, on that start. Uh, it's so important to not let anyone else get in the game, especially Nicholas there. We're looking at Jay Siegel, who is tied for low amateur. He is on the 18th green. Jay said he isn't ready to play yet. He opened up with a Fine round in the first day. It was right up on the leaderboard. Today's round is 75 and finishes the tournament at 14 over. Jay Siegel from Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Let's take another look at this putt by Fuzzy and David set it up so well for you, but it didn't fool Fuzzy, did it? it no, it did not. <laughs> Fuzzy is the only one that has not really f limped backwards here on the early holes. Everybody else has dropped back. Well, he hit a bad tee, tee shot at two, Jack, mm -hmm. and go, when he had made his five there, but there's a big two he made the third hole. As Peter was saying, why is it so great to make a two? Because there's a lot easier to add up twos. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. All right, that's what the story is here at Wingfoot. Here's a message now from the United States Golf Association. Here's a tape recording of Jack Nicklaus's tee shot at the seventh hole, 161 yards. Line. Very safe. Chance for two. Now there are the uh, corporate tents, the uh, giant corporations that have taken that space and uh, entertained their customers there, watching the great players. And here's one of them, Jim Thorpe. At level par. Third shot at this long. Par five, the fifth hole. This little pitch. Oh, great shot. He really has kept things going very well indeed. He's developed into a, a very good player indeed. His style may look a little unorthodox, but his nerves are good and his striking is very pure. This was uh, again a recording. This was Jim Thorpe's companion for the day, Greg Norman. 
say that was a big he had a big bomber in there it missed everybody and it's over there and could be in all sorts of trouble let's hear from John Schroeder who's down there with uh, Greg Norman and Jim Thorpe well Peter uh, actually he came out a lot better than he could have uh, he's got a an opening, he's got a free swing, and he's got a fairly bare lie. Uh, the only problem he has, uh, he can't see the flight. There's some trees in his way, but they're short, so he won't have any problem getting them over them. The hard part, of course, is going to be judging the distance properly, and uh, he's a little nervous now, I think. He had a chance to reach the green with a, with a wood, and he really tried to crank it up and uh, actually lost his balance and hit, as you saw, a low pull hook, and he was very dis disappointed with the, uh, the result. Now they're going to clear out some people here and uh, see if they can't get this ball on the green. He really needs to put this on the green and maybe at least save par, maybe try to make a birdie to get him going. He's given away a shot at one and he missed that short birdie putt at, uh, at four. Uh, he's got to start making his move now or he's not going to have a chance at this tournament. Well, if Fuzzy keeps holding those putts, nobody will. But uh, at this time, he's just one stroke behind the man in third in second place at three under par, but that is not the place to be. Nicholas Meanwhile at the seventh for a two. Three over par. Does he hit it? No. Back to Greg Norman at the fifth hole, seems to have to come through all sorts of trees and branches and everything else, but this is a par five, as John Schroeder was saying. Nicholas got his par. Great looking shot, great looking shot, Peter. From there. So Greg Norman escapes after a, a wild second shot here at the fifth hole on the green but uh, quite away from the hole. That's how they stand. Fuzzy now is two strokes in the lead, having dropped a stroke at the second hole. He's birded the third and fourth. The Trevino partnering uh, Jack Nicholas today on the, the round, putting for a two at the seventh. Trevino's yeah. he now goes back to two. Started the bed two over, now goes back to four over. So, there's some very fine drawings. Interesting man, the artist, too. See more of him. Back at wing foot, where Fuzzy Zeller has taken a two stroke lead in the final round of the United States Open Golf Championship. But remember, well, that's sort of as if in a baseball game, a team would take a two run lead in the second inning. He's got 14 holes yet to play. Greg Norman is there along with Hale Irwin. So is Jim Thorpe and others nipping at their heels almost literally. Miller and Strange playing well. Nicholas, well, one over par and in trouble again at the moment. Tim Simpson sliding back a little bit. But uh, it's going to be an interesting and lengthy afternoon here at Wing Foot under lowering skies. Still the threat of rain, but nothing yet. The wind, not as much of a factor as it was yesterday. Greg Norman, just a few moments ago, and look at that. Norman moving to three under par, tied with Hale Irwin, two shots behind the leader, Fuzzy Zeller. Lee Trevino, watch this educated fade. Well, if it's ever a hole, he ought to be able to drive on his number eight, a yeah. dog leg right. I mean, he just gets up, hits his normal shot, and just center cuts it. That's Playing with Jack Nicholas. Now, the leader. Fuzzy Zeller. And uh, Rob Rosberg. Well, got to go to Nicholas for a moment. Now this, this was, was his a very unnicholas like swing Ooh. at number eight, or result of the swing. Watch what happens. Bang! Into the tree and straight out. <laughs> onto the fairway to the left side, leaving himself, however, a long way from the hole. And that was a terrible shot, let's face it. 
uh, especially for him. Yes. What I've, happened? Done, I've done that before, but. Well, <laughs> I do it weekly, but uh, what do you think happened? Well, what he I He had a horrendous shot in the Memorial Tournament, which he won. Right? Yes, he did. Yeah. Knocked it out. It was the same kind of shot, as a matter of uh -huh. fact. Just straight right. Live to Greg Norman, now tied for second place on the sixth tee, the short par four. It seems to me any time you see a short par four in a scorecard, you got trouble. That's why it's short. Jim, I have to really comment on the birdie he just made. Yep. He, he turned disaster in, into a, a, a great positive move for him, and now he's really pumped. He's hit this a mile down the ferry with an iron, and he is in a position again to make another birdie and really get back into this tournament. Mm -hmm. John, you know how close two shots is in a tournament, especially when you play an open course. I mean, you make a birdie and he makes a bogey and the game is on. <laughs> That's exactly right. And again, I think making the four there really makes up for the missed short putt at the first hole after two fine shots where he opened with a bogey. It's now got him back in a positive, aggressive frame of mind, and uh, he's on the move, as is uh, Jim. Please note that Jim Thorpe, his playing companion, also has picked up a birdie and is one under. Four shots out. Here's Irwin with his fourth shot on the fifth hole, the par five. Rossi, how is this his fourth shot? Yeah. Hale hit a terrible second shot. He was a little annoyed by the uh, crowd running across the front of the green. He wanted to shoot before the uh, the other fellows had uh, gone to the sixth tee, and he couldn't, and he had to wait quite a while. He pushed it off under the tree to the right and then had to play safe. He had no shot at all. But now he's left himself a decent chance at a par five. But that's a hole where you absolutely have to pick up a shot. Here is Dick Fair, the one of two amateurs completing 72 holes. He is now tied. He is tied with Jay Siegel. Should he make this putt, he will win the medal as low amateur in the United States Open. And that is an honor you take with you for the rest of your life. And no. There will be a tie. And we might bring in Frank Hannigan, the senior executive director of the USGA. What do you do when there's a tie for low amateur? Uh, we will come up with two medals, one for uh, one for Rick, who, by the way, was also low amateur at the Masters, rather an odd double. And it's the first time Jay Siegel has been low amateur in the Open. Ah, wouldn't have thought that as good a player as he's been. Well, that's good. Congratulations to them both. Back to Fuzzy Zeller. Championship leader. Never played well in the open before. This will, this will be three straight Until birdies. Until today. Until this week. Three straight birdies. Fuzzy is on the march. On his way to fame, too, perhaps. He's been on the edge of that, even after his master's victory. We have today, as we did yesterday, 18-hole coverage. All the way from the first through 18, all the way around. And it helps us, and I hope helps you also, to get that feeling of how much endurance, how much patience, how much talent it takes to not make more mistakes than the other guy. Big putt for Hale. Don't want to lose two shots here. Four par. And he's missed it. Hale Irwin drops down to third place. Now behind Fuzzy Zeller and Greg Norman. Zeller with a three-stroke lead over Norman. Four over Hale Irwin. Boy, that's happened to very, very suddenly, too. It doesn't take long. Golf may be a slow game, but I'll be darned, Jim. It seems like it can happen to you so fast you can't believe it. Jack Nicholas, third shot. Eighth hole. Par four. Oh. Don't count him out quite, quite yet. Zeller on the move, but everyone else virtually dropping back a bit. You see that uh, Nicholas is three over, however, so he's got his work cut out for him. Greg Norman. In second place now in the sixth fairway. David, I know you can attest this is the kind of <laughs> shot that will make your palms sweat <laughs> and your breath go away. Oh, He's John, this, this shot across that bunker, which is wider across than it looks, and you, you can't knock it over the green because you're dead there. Of course, the bunker's short. This is some marvelous pitch. Now, he's probably got a, what, a 100-yard shot maybe, John? If that. And he had kind of a margin of lie, too, David. Was sitting down. He said a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. The shark showed the pearly whites that time. Well, he'll yeah. take it. Listen, on the green here, look. <laughs> I relief, I told you. <laughs> That's better than all the words we could come up with. You well, know, they, he, yeah. he, he had to shoot at the flag. I mean, there's, 
he didn't really want to, but in this position, you have to go with the flag here. And of course, if he miss hits it, it could be the tournament. Here's the leader going on a three birdie streak right now. Well, now what do you do? At least I'm waiting. Of, what? <laughs> so I'm waiting for what's her name to get out of the way. <laughs> Wonder who it is, Russi. Uh, he's he's waiting for the uh, caddy to put back the divot, uh, Jim oh, okay. from uh, Greg's shot. Rossi, it looked like uh, Fuzzy laid up with maybe a four iron or something. It looked like it had a lot of loft on it. Well, he laid way back. He's about uh, 40 yards short of where Norman was, but he still only has a nine iron in there, or maybe even a wedge. Play right. a whole plane straight downwind today, David. That makes it even harder. But the greens are really holding well. I, I can remember this green in years past where you had no chance to stop it. And uh, today you can. Hale Irwin, normally unshakable, shaking a bit right now. Hale has let his concentration get away from him for just an instant here. He's, he's really thinking more about the crowd and uh, things he shouldn't be doing. Nicholas needing this for a par. Can't afford many more bogeys. Hit the tree, remember, with his tee shot, and now fighting back. Well, I don't think we saw him miss one of those for many, many years. Those were his specialty. But Try it's another bogey. Tried 20 years. Yeah. Jack Nicholas in the U.S. Open. We are back at the Wingfoot Country Club, golf club rather, 45 minutes from Broadway on this Father's Day, and we're looking down now in the fourth round of the U.S. Open to Jim Thorpe. Who has refused to crack. Oh. Birdie opportunity just slipping away to the right. But he'll remain at one under par. Five shots behind Fuzzy Zeller, who has made the first real serious bid to take charge of this uh, tournament. Now this is on videotape a few minutes ago. Greg Norman for birdie at that sixth hole and ooh, coming off a of birdie at five. Tap in for par for Norman to keep him in second place at three under. Here's Fuzzy shot to the sixth hole. Look at this. Ooh. Ball coming back a little. This green's always been hard, though, David. It had to because of the shade. That has helped, and I, I think the superintendent may get out there and buff it a little bit, too. <laughs> but this is a... There's the shot. You see it all there over that yawning trap into a ribbon-like green. It's just not very deep. A lot like 12 at Augusta as far as the depth of this second shot for any of those that have played at Augusta and not played at Wingfoot. Well, Rossi, that was a pretty classy shot. Well, it's one he had to make, Jack. Here's Tom Watson at the 18th green, finishing up. It's one under for the day, Jack. Finally getting a hold of his game. He had a very rocky second and third round. <laughs> one under for the day in the final round of the U.S. Open, finishing plus eight. Playing with Peter Jacobson. Gave you some misinformation there. Peter shot 67 today. Oh. So here is the situation as Fuzzy Zeller taking command now in this final round. Three shots ahead of Greg Norman. Let's go to Jim McKay. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Update time and a little bit of a different update to begin with. Here is Frank Hannigan, the senior executive director of the United States Golf Association. We know what we think about this championship. The people at home have their opinion. What is your view representing the USGA of what's happened here so far? Uh, if you're referring to the golf course, we're delighted. Golf course and yeah. the championship. Well, the championship is fine. The, 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 the final is exciting. But we're particularly pleased with the way the golf course has turned out. Uh, in other words, sadism may have had its, may have had its day. <laughs> we like it a lot. In other words, there was a conscious decision to make it not a little easier, but set up a little bit more like it would be for a normal day's play than in recent years? 
Uh, it's not like normal days play. The rough is still a little very, bit more, very, very severe. Yeah. But it, it's the equivalent to might might be a half stroke penalty. A good player will drive in the primary rough. He'll be able to advance the ball. He won't be able to spin it very well and hold it on the green. But for the most part, he doesn't have to pitch out laterally. That's what we want to avoid. And yet, by the time this is over, it still may be that only one or two or three will be under par for the championship. Oh sure, but uh, we're not. Uh, as hung up on numbers as uh, as uh, as sometimes we, we as, as is said, this is uh, the the golf course is pure. Another reason the golf course is so good, and I think the scores are lower, is that the fairways are prepared so immaculately. Remember, this is a relatively new right. way of cutting greens, less than a half an inch. It's really quite something. So you never get a bad lie in the fairways. Okay, thank you very much, Frank Hannigan of the USGA. Perhaps you've just joined us in this long afternoon. Let's take a look backwards to see what has happened so far in the way of significant lead changes. Of course, the story has basically been between Hale Irwin, who led by a shot when the day began, and Fuzzy Zeller. Now, this was Irwin's third shot on the first hole. He got into trouble with his very first tee shot, snap hooking it in the left rough. This is third shot online, almost hit the flagstick, but left him with that long one for a par. Irwin a little bit discouraged looking as he walked up to the first green. But he's always been, as we said at the start, an unflappable player, particularly under U.S. Open situations. However, this was a little bit much to ask. And as you'll see, he didn't make it. He did make the next, but that was a bogey five that dropped him down to a tie for the lead with Fuzzy Zeller, the two of them playing hand to hand, man to man for the second day. Now here was Irwin in a bunker on the third hole. Or second shot, I should say, on the par three hole. And a decent bunker shot, but once again, leaving him with a long putt for a par. He also was unable to make that, so he had dropped yet another stroke. Here, meanwhile, was Zeller on the same hole, putting for a birdie, seizing the advantage. Bad luck of Irwin, knocking it in straight down the middle, by the way, if you notice for a birdie. So Fuzzy Zeller that quickly was the leader in the U.S. Open Championship. On the next hole, the par four, fourth hole. Zeller again. Again, a putt of a decent length. About the same length, I would guess. And again. Not in the top four. Not the tradesman's entrance, as Henry Long was used to say, but right in the middle for his second consecutive birdie. Zeller on the move to the fifth hole. The very next hole. Looking for a third successive birdie. Again, the distance, very similar to the others. And this time, perhaps a touch in the left middle of the hole. Fuzzy Zeller, just as hot as he could be. Now, we were watching them. And here, while we, at the very moment we were watching those videotape highlights, was the fourth birdie in a row. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, Fuzzy Zeller? Perhaps with one of the great rounds of U.S. Open history, but a long way to go. Now, Irwin with a birdie attempt. And down it went. So, the unshakable man has not shaken yet. Now, all of those were on recent tape. Now, let's our point of view, our perspective. Now here's Greg Norman putting for a birdie. This is live coverage on the par three seventh hole. Wouldn't, <laughs> we showed you all these tape birdies and now that one is live. This thing is getting pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. I can't remember how many times I've seen that many birdies in a row that we hadn't edited it ahead of time. <laughs> so here, here's what it what it means right now. Zeller leading by three over Norman, by four over Irwin, by six over Jim Thorpe, and then you see Miller Strange and Tim Simpson. But it isn't over. Three strokes is two in one direction and one in the other. Jack? All right, Wingfoot yielding some birdies here, and I guess George Burns has the record down at Marion for consecutive birdies at six. Oh. That, that's exactly what I was wondering. What is the record uh, length but, there? And old George did it at Marion, huh? Yeah. Here we have Jim Thorpe <coughs> at two under, five shots behind Fuzzy. Whoa! Another nice attempt. 
Second one in a row where he misses the birdie but gets the par and he'll remain at one under. And that's the situation. Fuzzy Zeller with four straight birdies at three, four, five, and six with a three shot lead over Greg Norman. This is the seventh tee. Par three. 161 yards standing outside the ball marker. And safely on on the left side, just about pin high. Jack, for those who want to know, it's legal to stand outside of the marker as long as the ball is between or behind the marker. Fuzzy does that, gets way over on that left side because he plays a right to left kind of shot. He can swing his hook in there. All right, this is Hale. Rossi, do you think Hale's, that birdie's got him back concentrating? Well, it's going to have to have. I'll tell you, he just cannot afford to lose any more shots, and he's got to start making some birdies of his own because I think Fuzzy's playing as relaxed and as good as anybody I've ever seen in the last round of the Open. But Rossi, what does that do now? It looked like he was going to be in a real fight all day, and all of a sudden he spurted out to a three-shot lead. What do you feel he has to do to win now? Well, he just has to keep up that tempo. I'll tell you, he likes to play fast. He was ready to play as soon as they got off the green. One thing that would really hurt him would be a slowdown in play because Fuzzy likes to keep going. About the same place here. Good shot. Seventh green. It's par three of 161 yards at Wingfoot. The final group, Fuzzy Zeller and Hale Irwin, both on safely. As Fuzzy Zeller has unleashed a birdie barrage. Four in a row. And at the moment is dominating the championship as much as anyone has. There are the rest of them. Tom Watson finished. He did shoot 69, mm -hmm. as I said. There we look down from the Goodyear blimp. You know, it reminds me of David. It's so perfect. It looks like the placemats in the grill room. <laughs> well, that's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> All right, Fuzzy Zeller and Hale Irwin walking up to the seventh. We ask Fuzzy Zeller why he is so relaxed with the crowd. Well, I'll be very honest with you, Rossi. It is, it's Fuzzy Zeller, but there again, I am trying to uh, relieve a lot of tension. Uh, and there again, I always remember uh, those people outside that gallery are making my living. So I, I want to make them feel as, as welcome as possible. And maybe next year when we come back into the New York area, they might bring two or three more friends and, uh, you know, have a great time. Fuzzy Zeller, selling the game of golf. Leading the United States Open Championship in the final round at the moment by three shots. Oh, how about that? He's birdied this the first three days. Well, tomorrow night, it's ABC's Monday Night Baseball. We'll have the Detroit Tigers with the best record in baseball hosting the New York Yankees in a battle of American League East rivals. Or Texas Rangers at California Angels. First place Angels trying to regain their form that made them the American League West champion in 1982. Tomorrow night on ABC's Monday Night Baseball. As Fuzzy Zeller and Hale Irwin look over their putts here at the seventh hole. Another raised green with deep traps, but they've avoided them. And Fuzzy, as we just noted, has birdied this the first three rounds. Is it too much to ask that he would birdie at the fourth day? I think he'd take <laughs> a little three and just uh, uh, tap dance on the 18. Yes. Walsh on. Left to right break. Got it on land, Jack. Just left it. Oh, those are the can. You don't want to leave yourself right now. Jim Thorpe, the eighth fairway, second shot on the par four. 442-yard hole. 
And nicely on my, his iron play has been remarkable. John Schroeder. Uh, Jack, he has finally calmed down after the first few holes, and he's really starting to swing uh, relaxed. Matter of fact, he told me walking up the uh, fifth fairway, the bogey on one really kind of made him get his act together, and he told me he's going to shoot a 66 today, and he went ahead and birdied five and uh, <laughs> has knocked it stiff the last three holes. So uh, he's not backing off by any means, nor is this man right here, Greg Norman. How far has he got? Well, I don't know how far he's got. About 175 yards, but he knocked it 40 yards by Jim. Mm -hmm. He is a little pumped up. Probably about a four iron. This hole's playing directly into the wind right now. He's pushed that a little to the right, Jack. He played a cut. It's going to catch the right side of the green, and uh, that's a good indication of how pumped up he is. He knocked it by the flag. Wow, and, and you can... Uh, not exactly what he wanted, but he's still putting for birdie. You see the ridge that runs across that green, and that'll be a very big factor in his putt. He better know it. <laughs> this is Hale Irwin for par at the seventh. And Hale, the third round leader, remains four shots behind Fuzzy Zeller. Wow, what a change in the first seven holes. So important at Wingfoot to get off to a start. And of course, fuzzy start is one you'd only dream about. We're at the 10th tee with Jack Nicholas. This marvelous par three of 190 yards. Pin is far back right. Just a beautiful pin position to go across that bunker if you're trying to shoot at the flag. Which I think Jack might be doing because he's four over. <laughs> From now on, he has to shoot at the flag. Oh my, just a little bit to the left and he would have been sitting for a birdie and now he's in the bunker. Fuzzy for par at seven, he's in. And he remains with a three shot lead at seven under. Ahead of Craig Norman. So here is Mr. Norman who is won his first United States tournament uh, a congressional as Dave pointed out the other day also a United States open course so his confidence has to be a lot better than it was his first American victory and we asked Greg how he feels about confidence and those kind of things I think so I think uh, ever since I decided to give away the international travel it was a lot of uh, hardship on myself and my family you know traveling backwards and forwards and living in a jet's not a lot of fun and uh, you know, when I came here in 82 it was a good move because I settled down. I enjoy playing here in America and enjoy the golf course and the people and the players. So I feel like I'm at home every week now. And uh, you know, obviously it's starting to show up in my game. Well, good on you, mate. It's certainly showing up on your game here. A marvelous open for Craig Norman. We're Fuzzy Zeller at the eighth tee. Dog leg right. Look at him bend it right around. Maybe. Perfect. Hmm? Not maybe perfect. <laughs> you got to be a little more positive there, Rossi. This uh, is something that Fuzzy does when he puts that heel there. It, as I said yesterday, it's like the late great Jimmy DeMera to address the, the ball the same way. Hands very low as opposed to Hale, whose hands are high, and, and the ball in the center of the club face. Yeah. Hale looks like he's hit the perfect face. They too, both get the job. Oh. Whoop. Too much, huh? They yeah, both used very to get the job done. Very bad drive here. Uh, very, very short. Hit the trees and came down in the high rough. The ball has disappeared, Rossi. It's uh, and right by the tree. You'll give us a report on that, I'm sure. Well, he's on the correct side of the tree, which yeah. is the right. At least he'll have a swing at it. But I don't think he can reach the green from uh, where he is. Uh, he's going to have to hit a wood to get there. And if he has the kind of a lie where the ball squirts, he might be able to get there. But I doubt it. Craig Norman up at the green at eight, and he has this ridge to go down. Over, up and down. Now it's down. Oh. It's a little shy. Just not as fast as he thought it was on the downhill side of that. All right, David, let's take a look in slow motion here. Well, I love Fuzzy Swing because it looks so free then with a great release as he addresses it outside. Do not advise this for the person at home here. 
Uh, feet nice and wide. Hands a little low, maybe a little more bent over than your pro says, but watch this as he goes through the ball. Good full wrist cock there. Club back to parallel. Watch this move and release just as free as if he was out for a Sunday afternoon stroll. And look at that finish for a man with a bad back, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, this is more classical, more typical, what you're probably taught to do. And Hale has good posture, good position at the top. Let's see where he gets. Yes, there. And then his left hip turns out of the way too fast there, Jack. Caused it out over the ball a little. Caused it to maybe a hit the heel somewhat. Too much cut. Hit the tree. Dropped down in the rough. Big putt for Thorpe here for birdie. Now I missed that one too, but he has been so brilliant with his irons that with a little bit of luck, he could be two or three more under par right. here. He's gotten the ball very close. <laughs> and hit reasonably good putts, just mm -hmm. has not had the correct lane. <laughs> Remains at one under through eight holes in the final round. Now Norman for par, and that's how he stands. Second place by himself at the moment. Now he has had the benefit of seeing uh, Jim's ball slide to the right. So he's got to feel if, just got to keep this ball in the hole. If he starts it, it uh, the right edge, he's gone. Keep it inside the hole. Good solid pop when you hit it. Doesn't have time to break. Just like you said. <laughs> Norman remains four under. Heading for the ninth hole. And a very eventful Sunday afternoon. Now, here is the eighth hole and the problem Hill Irwin has. That's where his drive went. Can he get a wood on it? Well, no. Here's That's an iron. Iron out of there. Just laid it up. Played way short. He's perhaps uh, 70 yards, 60 yards short of the green. He Sorry. looks a little disinterested, Rossi, at this point. Just uh, well, kind of mad at himself, I guess. Look at those four birdies. I don't think he's mad at Fuzzy, but uh, <laughs> I tell you, Fuzzy's delivered a knockout to him. Hitman. Fuzzy with a tremendous drive here, perhaps a five iron into this green, into the wind. Shooting at the fat part of the green, but uh, losing it a little right. Oh, he got lucky. Got a little lucky there. So on the fringe, no problem, and uh, Fuzzy Zeller in command now at seven under with a three-shot lead over Norman, and we'll be back to wing foot in a moment. Today's coverage of the 84th United States Open Golf Championship, an ABC Sports exclusive, is being brought to you by new Top Flight and Top Flight XL Golf Balls. Anything longer must be illegal by Manville. Manville quality products make your house a home. By the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old fashioned way. They earn it. And by Team Xerox. The right products and right people all working together. We're back high above the green acres of the wing foot golf course here at the US Open Championship of 1984. Huge crowds here limited to 20,000 and Fuzzy Zeller playing sparkling golf, the leader by three over the Australian Greg Norman. Halo, when you remember, on the eighth hole, hit a low cut drive into the trees, could only knock it forward, and as uh, Bob Rosberg told us, he was some 60 or 70 yards from the green in two. Uh, his third shot, well, one of those little pitches that these great men make uh, so easy or made to look so easy. This was taped slowly back and a little push through floated up to the flag and a little gem uh, also
also on tape, Greg Norman at the ninth. Oh, lucky perhaps. Perhaps a little fortunate to come back off the tree there, John Schroeder. Well, we'll get a report from John in a moment. It may have dropped the right side so that he can at least get it on to the edge of the green. Playing with uh, Greg Norman, Jim Thorpe. Had uh, quite a number of chances today and uh, just hasn't been able to capitalise on some very good iron shots, but still one under par. Uh, that's a super shot. Uh, here's Greg Norman and a word from John Schroeder. Well, Peter, if there was ever a difference in the condition of the golf course, this is it. He's in the rough, but he's got a, really a perfect lie to try to do what he has to do, which is hit a low, either a low straight shot or a low draw and bounce it into the green. Um, he just got to keep the ball down. He's about 190 yards from the flag. The way he's playing, shouldn't have too much problem with this. Hale Irwin missed that little putt and so dropped a stroke at the eighth. So Greg Norman, having hooked his tee shot, hit the trees and got a fortunate break and a decent lie on the green at the ninth in two, albeit a long way from the hole. This was Hale Irwin. We said that he bogeyed the eighth this for a four and just drifted away as Dave Marr said that's the way they go on the right hand side and Hale showing all the signs of a man who's a little bit disenchanted and disheartened live now fuzzy for his par and really you see the pace of that ball going into the hole that's either bravado or confidence I don't know but it just zoomed into the middle of the hole and he stays at seven under par Just ten holes left to go. Greg Norman, his nearest challenger, with Hale, Hale Irwin looking a little disenchanted and disgruntled. Perhaps some of the noise of the gallery has got to Hale a little bit and their verbal support for Fuzzy. Some uh, other scores for you. Jack Nicholas dropped another stroke at the tenth. David Graham took 40 strokes for the first nine. Al Sutton, who was going so well, went 6-6 at the 16th and 17th. Two double bogeys. Savvy Ballesteros doing nothing. Morris Atalski, who was out in the third group from the end, started with a triple bogey, seven, and had another one at the ninth. He'll be out in 45. Perhaps you weren't with us earlier when we mentioned this. For those of you who are interested in the sport of boxing, world light... Heavy lightweight championship. I think this is a bit more important right now. Here we go. Peter? Well, I don't like all that signaling to the right. And the reason for that, ooh, hello. Down in the forest, something stirred. It was only the sound of a bird or Fuzzy's ball, I don't know. But that could be in all sorts of trouble there. We'll have a word from Bob in a minute, Bob Rosberg. From across the fairway where I am, it looks like he's all right. I think he's in the area where the people have walked and he has a free swing. There's no question about that. And really not much in his way. Well, such is golf. If the gods are with you. Now, here's Ailo, and he really needs something quite dramatic to happen to him. Uh, like a few good shots straight out the middle of the club and a couple of putts hold if he's going to become a challenger again. A real challenger, that is. He's still in third place but five behind fuzzy and also cut away to the right and this one's really bad Peter this one is terrible it, it's in the deep grass between two big trees he's playing a lot like he did at Litham and St. Anne's when he had a great chance to win the British Open and seemed to lose interest very early in the round yeah, when he was playing with the Sevry Ballesteros that, of course. He that's right he seemed to lose interest because he felt that Sevy was wild and getting the breaks and the crowd was on his side and uh, for a man of his intellectual intelligence, I wouldn't have thought that uh, he would have allowed those things uh, 
to have bothered him, if indeed they do. He's got such a super game, but getting off to that shaky start was uh, very costly. And of course, those birdies, all those birdies by Fuzzy, what was it, four in a row? Mm, terrific stuff. There's the ninth green. Look how it nestles up there by the clubhouse and those uh, big tilling house bunkers. Not all that near to the green, but uh, all part of the sculpture of the course. And this man, Greg Norman, a long putt here. He will be overjoyed to get down in two. One under, so two putts to be out in 34. Good pace. You see it just speed up at the end. That's gone. I'm getting on for five feet past, perhaps not quite as much as that. Very good run, good line. <laughs> Greg Norman. Married an American girl, Laura. Lovely Laura. And they have a daughter, Morgan Lee. There's part of the crowd moving up here with both uh, the final two players in the rough and a word from Bob Rosberg. Well, this is the way the game goes. Fuzzy's drive went exactly the same line as, as Hale's, went through a couple of trees, got onto the path where the people walk. He has a beautiful lie and has to play about a five-yard fade to get the ball onto the green. Hale has no swing whatsoever. He has to, going to have to chip the ball out. It's strictly a chip-out shot. Well, that's the unfairness and the wonder of the game of golf. Jim Thorpe up ahead at the ninth green. After another good second shot, putting for a birdie three. No, never had the legs. Greg Norman surveying his putt, and uh, not that uh, every putt isn't crucial. Quickly back to Hale Irwin, and you can see the miserable spot he's found under the trees. He's just got to flick it back onto the fairway, and it's been a cruel day so far for Hale Irwin. So he's played two, and now, uh, as I was saying, the uh, another, yet another crucial putt for Greg Norman. This to stay at four under. This for his powerful. Yeah, he's holed out beautifully. So he hit a, a bit of a wild tee shot and got a four. Halo Irwin perhaps hit a slightly worse tee shot and he's going to struggle not to take six. But Fuzzy's ahead by three over the Australian Greg Norman. Jim Thorpe gets his four to remain one under with just nine holes to play. Back we go. There's Fuzzy down in the Christmas trees. About 190 yards, uh, Peter, and a very interesting thing happened. When Hale saw where Fuzzy's ball was, he just threw his club up in the air in disgust. You don't see that happen very often. Well, very like Lytham St. Anne's, as you said, Bob, but uh, here's Fuzzy. Yeah, he's got a fade. He didn't fade it enough, though. He's going to catch the left bunker. Yes, he did. But that might have been a lot worse. That's the bunker shot that Fuzzy has to play. Not such a difficult one. It's all warming up. The 10th tee. Classic par three at the Wingfoot Golf Club in Marnock, New York, 190 yards long. Fraught with danger, bunkers all around, trees to the left, which proved the undoing of Andy Bean yesterday when he made six on this hole. And the beginning of the long voyage home for all of the golfers in the final round. Greg Norman, the blonde hair, Jim Thorpe to his right, both playing extremely well. Norman, one under for the day. 
Now, Fuzzy Zeller on the ninth hole. He has not completed that front nine yet. His third shot on the par four. Oh, boy. What a shot. Uh, so far, it certainly looks as if he is not to be denied. But so often, the United States Open has decided not on the front nine, but on the back nine of the final round. Three iron, we're told, for Greg Norman. Great pin position. Back right over that bunker. We saw Nicholas put it in that bunker just... Uh, 30 minutes or so ago. That ball is going right at the flag, David. Great shot. Oh, boy. <laughs> Think that John. man playing some golf? He talked about oh, it. You can hear one of these Yankees say, go, Shark. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting, I think, is that this American, this New York crowd, has adopted Greg Norman from Australia, and he's reacted to it. The first two rounds, he was solid, and he was serious and by himself. Then they started to adopt him, and you see he's been smiling, he's been talking to the crowd, he's been doing little dances for them, and it obviously helps. Remember, he said himself that he feels at home here now. Well... That is some shot back there. You say 190, but with that pin, you know, 190 is to the middle of the green. The right. flag stick is on the back, so it, it's 200 yards, winds left to right. And to have enough courage to shoot at that, we watch Thorpe also with a three iron, shows you how strong he is, too. We had an even par 35 on the front that could have been a lot better with a couple of putts. This also looks real good if it'll hold his line, David. He did not like, like it. He had something in his eye there. Yeah. No, that he's over. That, uh, I'll go see where that ended up. It bounded down to the right near one of our cameras in the crowd. Uh, exactly. He's not going to have an easy shot to get it up and close. Okay, so Norman in outstanding shape. Jim Thorpe with a problem on the 10th hole as they begin the final nine. Just behind them, remember the championship leader, Fuzzy Zeller. Look at that hole. You can hear the crowd's having a good time. <laughs> For them, yeah. it's easy to laugh and kid each other. Some serious business to win the U.S. Open Championship. One of the greatest honors that the game of golf can bestow on you. Hale Irwin, who has not had the opportunity to have the crowd on his side today because he started off badly and it has continued that way. This for we a bogey five. Yet another one. He started this day five under. He could go to even. In other words, if he makes this, he'll have a five and a round of 40 on the front side. So we're told. Ooh. So, double bogey six? Mm. That's too bad. Uh, you know, a lot of people asked me this morning who I thought would win, and I, I thought it would be this man right here if you just get off to a good start. And uh, so he has shot a 40. 40 on the front nine with a double bogey. Mm. Not what anyone would have expected. Well, take a look at it. He had one birdie. One, two, three, four. Four bogeys and a double bogey on the ninth hole for 40 strokes going out. It's the sixes that get you in major championships. You know, you might make some bogeys, but six on a hole for these guys. This for the par Tough. now for the leader. Remember, he was bunkered on his second shot. Okay. Boy, he just rattled at him. <laughs> Remains seven under. Three under on the front side. 32 strokes. In other words, he has gained eight strokes on the man he is playing with today. But now his next opponent is the man playing in front of him. And on most holes, he will have Greg Norman in his sights looking ahead. And another way he has to look at it. He has a three-stroke lead. Nine holes to play. He can't give me three shots at nine holes. <laughs> right. Kay. Exactly. Scores of other players you want to, may want to know about. You know, Fuzzy Zeller for, first came to most people's attention in the 1976 Quad Cities Open when he scored eight birdies in a row on the last eight holes of the tournament to win, thereby tying the tour record, as you know, Bob Golby. And he's done it today with a string of four straight birdies in the middle of the front nine. So he gets those hot streaks. Johnny Miller. Johnny Miller at two over. This for a birdie at the 12th hole. Johnny's played very well here. And there it goes. Goes to just one over. Johnny Miller, who started the day two over, is now one under for the day. Now back to Jim Thorpe. Uh, John, are you close to that? Can you give us a... 
Yeah, I'm right here, uh, Jim. Yep. It's actually kind of funny. The ball bounded off the right edge of the green under our camera in the guy's uh, knapsack that he brought with him under the tripod. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's suspended on the bag. So what they're going to do is give him a free drop. Uh, I would assume it's a, an obstruction. Would you like to explain that rule, Frank Hannigan? Well, the, uh, the camera is treated, uh, we treat it as a temporary immovable obstruction. And he's entitled to, to what uh, line of sight relief from the camera, if it's indeed it's interfering with him. I can't, because we can't tell from the, from the monitor whether it is or not, John. What about the knapsack that the ball came to rest in? Well, the knapsack is, uh, <laughs> is a movable obstruction. He gets to, to, uh, to pick it up and then, uh, and then drop the ball. Okay. Um, Jim, what's happening is they're determining where the closest point of relief is. Uh, mm -hmm. Greg asked me where, <laughs> I'm standing on the greener with Greg, he asked me where the ball ended up. He almost got a heck of a break. They almost let him drop out to the left of the camera, which would have given him a little easier pitch yeah. because the green is so pitched up high in the back, but it looks like he's got to go uh, to the same side of the camera that his ball is on. Now, and he is now measuring to uh, go ahead and lift it and drop it. Now watch that he will drop in a different fashion than he would have last year, Frank, right? Frank Every Hannigan would like to have a word. We have to go back, however, at the moment to Johnny Miller because he's playing so well. On the 13th tee, 13th being a par three, 212 yards. He didn't like the looks of that. If it's, that's why. If it's to the right, he's not gonna like it. I was talking about with Jim Thorpe, in case we don't see that, is this year you drop it, hold your arm out straight to the right and drop the ball instead of dropping it over your shoulder, as was the rule in past years. And as I understand, you may face any direction. Or anyway, yeah. yeah but your yeah. arm extended. Hannigan will enlighten us here in a few moments. Yeah, you just have to hold it out horizontally. It doesn't have to be to the right. It could be straight well, ahead or behind you. Yeah. But uh, Thorpe has taken relief. There's his uh, pitch shot. He, he got it over two. That was not a penalty. Two. Almost. Caught good shot. Pass. That's a good shot. That is straight downhill, as John Schroeder said. Uh, now, Fuzzy Zeller, of course, has been standing on the tee or sitting. I can't see what she's doing, but uh, observing all this and having a chance to think about the nine holes that lie ahead. And that's the one thing Bob Rosberg had said might uh, shut him down a little was he likes to play along fast. He likes to He's looking up to his left, seeing the flag there, and the caddy's pointing out which way the wind is blowing. Seller by three over Norman, by six now over Jim Thorpe, by seven over Hale Irwin, who led by one when the day began. Johnny Miller there, heard a strange. Lee Trevino at four over with Mark McCumber, who had a hole in one earlier in the championship. Jack Nicklaus fading out of it. Peter Jacobson played well today. Yes, he did, 67. Some of the others. Who have had their moment in the sun, some of them. Others have just played not quite as well this time as in previous years. Chip Beck played very well last year, and he's played well this year. Marsatowski, good round yesterday of 69. Richard Fair, the amateur, tied for low amateur with Jay Siegel. Now Jim Thorpe for par. All right, come on, Jim. Now you've hit some good shots and had putts for birdies that made one. He's, this is the kind of putt you make. All right, come on. Missed it almost. Nope. So that'll drop him down to even par for the championship, tied for the moment with Hale Irwin. Well, the day began, he probably would have thought it was pretty good if he'd be tied with Hale Irwin at the end of 10. But not the way it's turned. Definitely thought it would be all right. Fuzzy talking to Jim Hand, the president of the USGA. He's walking all the way with the leaders today, as is the custom. Now for a birdie. Fuzzy knows this is for two. Okay, would put him within two strokes. And Fuzzy's got this tough par three to play. Could After be, all could. the daring do that Fuzzy has achieved. Absolutely, this man hadn't gotten out of it by any means. Nope. Oh, now, now the tension turns the other direction. It's now for the par, and there is Fuzzy watching straight ahead. But taking a look at the trees, too. Maybe checking the wind. Maybe he'd rather not look. Well, sometimes you don't want to look. Yeah. Oh. 
Okay. All right. Days at four under. It shows you if you get a little too greedy around here and you take a run at a putt that's downhill, and all of a sudden you got a hard day's work to make a three. The fuzzy's going to be looking at the back of Greg Norman all the way home. It'll be interesting. Jim Thorpe for the bogey four. Come on, Greg. Come on, Greg. And drops him as we said to even par, tied with Hale Irwin. Straight down on the golf course you're looking. At. He's looking right down at 10T. Now you see the way you cut away there, but. Uh, We'll see what the fuzz does. This ball's to the right. Oops, oops. That is no place to be. Not the place to be. It's in the bunker, I believe. Yes, that ball is in the bunker. Yep. And uh, I tell you, it's not sitting it badly, is. though. It stayed a little on the upslope so that he will be able to throw the ball up high in the air. It's going to be a very short bunker shot but one that shouldn't be too difficult to play. But that's two holes in a row where he's been bunkered, Bob. Any sign of the swing shaking or? I don't think so, Jim. Those are two real him. hard shots he had. Yeah, okay. You know, this hole is uh, is a hole that, uh, as David said yesterday, when Andy Bean went left, you don't want to go left here. You can still play from the right, but you can't play from the left. Plus, if you miss, you got to be in the bunkers here. You miss the bunkers. And, and now you've got to pitch across them to the little narrow greens. It's going to be very interesting to see how Hale plays this last nine holes as to whether he just plays it out or, or tries to grab a hold of himself and, and really see what he can do. Ooh. Oh, that's a beautiful golf shot, really. A little unlucky to end up where it did. He did, you're right, Bob. It didn't get all that uh, maybe he deserved. So they're starting to walk it home in the U.S. Open. Nine holes to play for the leader. From the Goodyear blimp high above Wingfoot, and here is Fuzzy Zeller at the 10th hole in that bunker to the right. Well... He is leading by three at the moment. Tried it just a little too softly. That's the shot he has left. I would think he's still away. Rossi, are you down there at the green? No, I'm not. Yeah, okay. Now, meantime, ahead on 11, Jim Thorpe from the fairway. He's got a short iron, Jack. He's a perfect position to come in at the flag. If that's up, that's going to be very close. Oh, oh my. Barely got there. <laughs> what a lesson in irons. Here's Fuzzy's third you know, shot up to three, and he is not home yet. We may have a big change on this leaderboard. Now Norman, now he's in the rough, huh? John Schroeder. There's the show. Boy, he might have some tree trouble also. And hit the tree. It sounds like it did. What happened to it? No, that didn't touch the tree. He had a great shot from there, Jack. He had to actually really hit that ball hard just to get it out of there. And he's so strong, he just he lofted it probably with a wedge or nine iron about 140 yards, which is a big, you know, he's so strong. That's a huge advantage here. And I'm sure he doesn't know what's going on behind him. As we go back to the 10th, and this is Hale Irwin. And the putter. He's four feet. <laughs> the good news is it's uphill. Long, long afternoon for Hale. 
Started the day leading at five under. He's now at even. As Fuzzy Zeller ripped off four straight birdies in a row at three, four, five, and six to take command of the tournament. And this is the first time he's been in trouble since the first hole. This is for a bogey that would drop him to six. And now the gap between himself and Norman. But yeah, it goes. Bogey four. Leads by two. And expression almost the same as when he birdies. Now Hale having to work for a par again. T for the 11th hole. Par four, 383 yards. And up on the 11th green, this is Greg Norman, his first putt. the ridge looks like it might have nice speed and turns right out the speed was perfect lovely cut for the young Australian and you hear his gallery whooping it up for him meanwhile back on the tee Hale Irwin has the honor for only the second time today. Bob Rasberg. A little of the right, but perfect. It's coming down off the hill and be absolutely ideal. The hole cut short left. That's just a perfect shot. That last putt he made really helped. Uh, you know, he's not out of it yet. When you come right down to it, he has still got a chance. If he can make three birdies coming in, he could come awful close. Yes, because these holes have a way of jumping up at you. Uh, look at Fuzzy, though. Huh? Well, that's just a <laughs> perfect there, just a little farther. Both of them on the right side of the fairway at 11. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two stroke lead by Fuzzy at the moment. As this 1984 United States Open Championship begins winding down. Lee Trevino. Curtis Strange, Johnny Miller, all of them on the leaderboard. And that's the situation at this moment in the final round of the 1984 United States Open. We'll return to Wingfoot in just a moment. Welcome back, and the situation now getting a little tense over these final uh, few holes. Well, they always say, and it's a bit of an old cliche that uh, Tournaments are all won and lost on the last nine holes, and how true that may once more be here as we look at Fuzzy Zeller just throwing his second shot up with the 11. Beautiful shot, though, for all that. 
Peter, that shot was kind of hit in a funny fashion. It wasn't it wasn't really nipped. It floated a little for that kind of a lie. I don't I think he hit it a little heavy. It was Bob Rosberg, uh, Jim Thorpe, the 11th. It's for a birdie. And yes. Yeah. Indeed. A few more of those, and he could well put the cat among the pigeons. Hail Irwin now. Second to the eleventh. Good shot. No, really, is a super shot. And a very holeable putt for a birdie. That's how they stand. Winning its way across the airways to perhaps more countries than, than ever, somewhere around about 22. Live in uh, Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Japan, and Canada, and on tape in countries as far apart as Switzerland and Saudi Arabia, Spain, Italy, Thailand, Brunei, all the Borneo country, Hong Kong, Pakistan, and Argentina, Panama, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Singapore plus all American military forces in Korea, Philippines, Germany, and Diego Garcia. Here's Curtis Strange, though, at the 15th for a birdie, just two over par. Little tap, and down it goes, and will it hold? Yes. But seven behind Fuzzy. Funny old game this is. David Knipe, who was our, our modest hero of the first two days. This is our hero of the moment. David finished with an 83 today, but at least for two days he had his moment of center stage. This is Jim Thorpe, the 12th. Long par five, giving it the works. What a nice bounce through that edge of that rough. That's a two big shot. 535 yards. Back to Fuzzy. The 11. My word, he's very good on those long, long butts. So near. Greg Norman at 12th. Peter, he's got a very bad lie in the rough. Uh, he's in the first cut, but it's sitting down in a bare spot, so it's right on the ground. He's got no opportunity to try to reach the green, so he's just going to lay up. Probably with about an eight iron, seven iron, maybe. You can see how, how hard he had to hit down and through that just to get out of that hole. Perfect position, about 140 yards from the flag. Hey, Logan. Putting at the 11th for a birdie. And just top side. And a four for Hale. He stays at level. Now Fuzzy with his three, four foot putt to stay at six under and two ahead of Ben. Well, he's been holding these very confidently. He's been rattling them into the hole. Now, whether he will do the same with this one, well, we'll know in just a few seconds. Started level par for the day. Jack Nicholas drops another stroke to go six over. Now then, the third shot of Greg Norman, and let's hear from John Schroeder. 
Peter, uh, Greg's got, like I said, about 140 yards up, up there. Not too difficult a shot for him today. He's a little below the green, but uh, he's got about an eight-inch nice play a cut shot. Um, I must I must say I got to laugh a little bit. Jim hit that second shot. His 260 yards. He's walking up the fairway and says, "That's soul power, brother." Uh, he's really pumping that birdie man the last hole. Yeah, the 12th hole, Greg Norman's third shot. That ball's moving to the right. Slight right. trouble in the bunker. Yep. There it is. It's not plugged. And this is one department of his game that Greg Norman has improved so dramatically over the last couple of years or so. He's got to get it up and the pin very close. Quite a delicate shot. Back to the 12th tee. This long par five and fuzzy's drive. This is a big drive for Fuzzy. If he can get it in the fairway, but he's hooked it again like he did yesterday. Watch it, watch it over there. Oh. Watch it. Well, he has put it over there. It. I tell you, I don't Go think it's going to be as bad as it was yesterday, though. He's past the tree, and he's going to have an open shot to be able to lay up, but there's no way he can put it on the green. But he could have with a good drive. We'll just leave them for a moment to go and see a former champion finish, Hubert Green, at the 18th. Five over for today. Ten over for the championship. No. The par here of 70, I think, is so severe that for the old timers, I think the the old ratings of 72, 472 is 288, I think, keep uh, scoring in a better perspective. Anyone at eight over par, believe you me, has played this course very well indeed. Hubert Green, hoping this is going to be his last shot for the championship, and it is. Shakes his head, moves away, 292. He's been out with Lanny Watkins for the day. Lanny, two over. For today, seven over for the championship. Yeah, well held. <laughs> 72 for, for, for uh, Lanny. Seven over. Just averaging a touch less than 72 strokes around. And, uh, well, that really isn't too bad at all. Jim Thorpe now. Back at the 12th after those two massive uh, shots. Two nice putts here would be good. He's a long way away. shot now the one he just pulled I think maybe he was just going to trying to hit this one a bit too hard heads nice and still the familiar big turn drops down the legs in a nice position just comes in and perhaps just whips that club head in a fraction early you can see his head tilted back a bit just came up and round on it when you're hitting that hard you're talking in fractions and missed everybody there now back to Greg Norman this little bunker shot didn't get any bite on it. So he's struggling, could well drop one here at 12. The more I see of this game of golf, the more it becomes attack and defend, knowing when to defend, when to attack. That's where Fuzzy's ball is in the trees on the left, and I had a feeling I just saw it stop on the walkway where the spectators had been, and he may be able to conjure up some long shot. There it is. 
Let's hear from Bob. Hey, you're right in the fact that he's in the walkway again. It's just sitting perfectly, but he has nowhere to go except out short of the fairway bunker. If he can play a wedge or no more than a little nine iron, he'll be right where Hale has put his second shot about 120 yards short of the green. You really can't go at the green, though, Peter. He's got a big tree, and there's just no sense in doing it right now. Well, no, he won't know just at this moment, Bob, that Greg Norman is likely to drop a stroke here, so if he can just play for a comfortable five, he could uh, well increase his lead on this hole. That's right. Uh, Bob called it just right. This looks like a nine or a wedge just flipped out down towards those tall trees down the front there. Uh, he has just laid it up perfectly. Just uh, about 15 yards short of Hale's layup. Uh, another tremendous break, really. Uh, a drive that could have been anywhere, and, and yet uh, not a whole lot different from a good one. 12th green and Greg Norman for a par five. No. He's been lipping the hole. He's played some beautiful shots. He hasn't held all that many putts, but he's been going along very nicely. And uh, that wasn't the putt that cost him the stroke there. There were a couple of factors on the way. Missing the fairway with his tee shot and then playing uh, perhaps too boldly at the flag with his third. Interesting to hear the crowd react there when Fuzzy just played a very ordinary pitch out of the rough there. Uh, it's one thing, and there's the, one of the youngest spectators here. That's the time to start him, son. Can't wait for a gin and tonic, but never mind. More of that later. <laughs> there is the gin and tonic. My word. But the... Uh, this is really is becoming more and more of a family day out, these golf events now. Of course, Father's Day. And uh, congratulations to all you dads. Jim Thorpe here putting for a birdie. And he's making a little bit of a run at things if Greg Norman just slips a little bit. If he gets this. Which he does. Well <laughs> I'll tell you about the crowd being on your side. It makes an enormous difference, or it can do. And it's only a week ago since John McEnroe played Lendl in Paris, and uh, he got the French crowd, which was just like uh, the old Roman crowds used to be at the gladiatorial days. They, he put their backs up, and they crowded and yelled for the other guy, and uh, I think that contributed to his defeat, McEnroe's defeat. It's a great thing to have the crowd on your side, and this man's got him with him today, Fuzzy Della. Beautiful looking shot. shot if it's up. No, it's pretty well short. Later, probably 25 or 30 feet. He's got to go up over that rise. It's not an easy putt. But safely on the green. And two putts would increase his lead to four. I think that would increase it to three, Peter, wouldn't it? Uh, fuzzy six under and Greg. Oh, yes, indeed, you're quite right. He would, Greg Norman's dropped back to three. Fuzzy would stay at six, it wouldn't be correct. A birdie. Halo wins third at the 12th. Oh, that's a beautifully played shot here. A low punch. Well, he was lucky and unlucky there. 13th tee. Come on, ball. Easy. Oh, no. Jim Thorpe. Yeah. Very bad oh, shot, Peter. He had a big pull hook to the left. Oh, he's going to have to get real lucky even to have a shot. That could have hit somebody maybe on top of the head and shot into those trees where the spectators are running in now. Well, let's hope the spectator's okay if indeed it did catch them. Norman needs to steady himself. Dropped a stroke at the hole where he was obviously looking for a birdie to par 5 12. Peter, this shot's playing about 10 15 today. The wind is 
negligible right now. I'd say probably be hitting a three iron. Things getting a little noisy. And uh, Dorothy's is right alongside, of course, and the applause for Norman and uh, Zella and Irwin walking up onto the green now. Norman ready with his tee shot here at the 13th. Nice one onto the green. We're doing no harm at all. slow motion this big powerful man Jim Thorpe shoulders very square huge arms right elbow starts to bend a little bit and he crouches down over the ball gives it a whipping flailing action powerful thighs cracks it through head well behind the ball there the old right hand crossed over a bit early and the old lasso at the end there didn't quite work out it's one does he trying to get it back but no uh, Norman much more upright Slightly taller, slimmer figure. Very wide takeaway with the hands. Nice position at the top of the backswing. And now drives on, kicks on with that right leg and that familiar slide away with the right foot. Here's Fuzzy. And that was beautifully judged up over the ridge that Bob Rosberg was speaking about. Right to the whole side. And another par. Wild tee shot, but still a par. He remains six under. And now three up. Still plenty of dangerous holes to come. So Fuzzy Zeller now leads by three over Greg Norman as we look down on Wingfoot. Back at the US Open, and the trouble this time is for Jim Thorpe in third place, one of three men under par for the championship. But on the par three hole in deep trouble. John Schroeder, are you near that? I'm right here, Jim. He is absolutely dead. He's going to try to play a bump and run out of the bush. Yeah. Running across the green. Oh, 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 oh. He had absolutely no play. He just tried to get lucky and run it through the rough and hope it would catch it, but it was way yeah. past the bunker, did it? Yeah, it looks like it ran way over the hill. I'm over near that tree, yeah. yeah. It's over near a tree. Okay, I'll go over there. Okay. Schroeder on the fairways, moving swiftly. Poor Jim, he's almost no better off down there pitching up over that hill than, it, than he was before. Well, we have a moment, Dave. We said earlier we reported the, on the death of the great racehorse Swale suddenly this morning and somewhat mysteriously after uh, what appeared to be an easy work out of Belmont Park. The autopsy has been conducted this afternoon by Dr. William Donowick of the University of Pennsylvania. Initial work on the preliminary findings shows no evidence of a heart attack. No evidence of a heart attack which had thought, been thought to be the reason. No obvious reasons for the death. I'll have to await the results of microscopic examination of tissues and the toxicology examination. That will take several days. A great tragedy to the sport of racing and the sport in general. Swale dead, three-year-old. Now, on videotape, fourth shot. Another one of those little awkward things that you get in the open with the fringe maybe just by his backswing there and Boy, that did it to him this time didn't it and that putt was also missed Dale Irwin continuing to have his problems now Jim Thorpe was his third shot on the par three hole nice shot but in probable danger of a double bogey five be tough would drop him back to even par. Ah, winged foot. A. W. Tillinghast, back in the early 1920s, sat down and mapped it all out in his mind. How to make it look receptive to you, to look beautiful, and yet to have teeth sharper than those of the great white shark himself. Huh? <laughs> Well, it's uh, you get on the wrong side or you hit a bad shot. Uh, you miss those bunkers, even though you don't want to be in a bunker. And then you really find out how hard Wingfoot is. Now, from this point on, the problem of Fuzzy Zeller, it seems to me, David, is to 
decide whether to continue to attack as he has in a, in a intelligent way or whether to start to play defensive and how many times have we seen somebody start to play defensive on, on the back of the US Open and get into trouble. You can't worry about playing defensive because this man here Greg Norman is due to make some putts somewhere and he's not about to start laying up. Good putt. How do you play these last six holes safe? I mean, you got <laughs> this tough par three, then you got 14 and 15, which even though they're downwind, they're not simple, and 16 and 17, where Hal Sutton made boxcars there today yes. with a 6-6. Six, six. Yes. Uh, tell me where I can play safe and I'll go do it. Safe tends to be, it seems, less well than you can play. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm just saying it. Once you start making bogeys, look at look what's happened to Hale today. Yeah. Now well, there's Norman at age 29. He and Fuzzy Zeller, age 32, should be just moving into the prime of their careers. And so it appears certainly in this United States Open. Both big, strong, and at peace with themselves, it seems, from what you can tell. You need that out there, don't you? You have to have that. Jim Thorpe time and again has shown toughness in this championship and on this day and making this putt could be a very good example of it again and a big putt for him now he's played well he just hasn't made anything he's had a number of chances needs this for a bogey and he certainly deserves to make one isn't that tough isn't that tough it'll be a double bogey Five, which drops him to even. Talk to Fuzzy earlier about what he thinks of the final six holes here. Well, I'm going to tell you, Rossi, I, I played the golf course probably when I was 19 years old in a four ball tournament with my older brother. And uh, I remember the golf course semi, but I didn't realize those, uh, the last six or such. Uh, I don't know, you just got to bring your golf clubs. There's no uh, any or buts about it. You, you've got to hit solid shots. And uh, if you don't, you're going to make bogeys and, uh, you know, sometimes a double ball. You know, they're great golf holes, uh, but they're again, you know, your first 12 holes aren't too bad either. I mean, you've got the par threes, I think, probably are the key to the golf course. If you can get by them in par and under par, which I've played them uh, the last two rounds, you ought to shoot the course fairly well. Well, on this particular par three, he's just put it in beautiful position, as you saw while you were listening to him. Well, that's the place. If you're going to make uh, a two, let's say, which I, uh, he's below the hole, putting up the hill, just where you want to be. Hale Irwin now six over on today's round, seven shots behind the leader. Beautiful looking shot here. It kicks off the left hill. Mm. Really a little unlucky that it didn't kick straight ahead. Good shot though. So there they are, both safely on the green on the 13th hole. The U.S. Open nearing its conclusion. Back at wing foot as the last act of the United States Open Championship for 1984 begins to unfold. Fuzzy Zeller with a three shot lead over Craig Norman as we go to the 14th tee and Mr. Norman. Four hundred and eighteen yards. He pulls that right foot up almost to his left and that follow through doesn't it just in case you don't think you move to your left side I mean that's it that would help so many people at home if they get off the right side they wonder why they slice it or top Claude, it Claude Harmon once told me if you ever see a driver on television a player do that the ball will be in the center of the fairway and that's where it was this is on videotape here is Jim Thorpe just took a double bogey to drop him to even par but he is still thundering off the tee gets that one past Norman. Now we're back live. Hale Irwin. A birdie putt here at the par three 13th. Oh come on Hale. Come on. We've all had days like this. You don't usually see a player like Hale have such a bad day but everything he's done. He finally got a putt on line. Leaves it short. Get a good shot the last hole. Gets up against the fringe. Makes six. 
and there's no explaining it jones once said he never figured out why he couldn't play well every day he really didn't understand why he couldn't play well every day by rhythms or something huh you know the old story and what and I bet the trucks won't be there to take us back to camp either. The parachute didn't open. Huh? <laughs> Here's Mr. Norman. Well, he's about the only one that has a realistic chance. It just seems that the gods of golf are smiling on Mr. Zeller today, though. This ought to be the kind of shot Greg can play. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice high shot. Pin yeah. in the left of the green. That looks great. That looks great at Tarna. John Schroeder just under the hole. Nice shot. Right on line. He just made it up. Made it all the way. John, have you seen Greg play very much? You had a chance to watch him. Well, we're back go back. We're at the 17th, and here's Curtis Strange, who is going for Birdie to put him at even par. Is he you just around the corner? Now back to Fuzzy Zeller for birdie of 13. As I've said so often, when you see a guy move that quickly after he's hit it as Jim Clark hits his second shot at 14, you know he's missed that putt. Well, I'd like to have that man hit all my irons for me. I will tell you. And your drives, too, Jack. He's a little longer than you are off the tee. Just right. a bit, yes. You putt for him and let him do the rest. I putt for him. He'd do the rest. We'd win some. I got to be proud of that, though. He just made that double bogey. Steps yep. right up at a good driving hole, drives it down the fairway, and hits a real fine second shot in there. He's at even par in third place. Look at that determination. He's a... Uh, well, it's a lot still riding. Uh, whether or not he's in the Masters depends sure. on how, uh, you know, one qualification is how you finish in the Open, whether you have to qualify again next year. And then, of course, there's always uh, money, which is can be somewhat important to you. The final five holes are a test. Oh, and here's a real dive hook. Look out for this one. It's out of bounds oh. over there, Ross. See it there? Well, he's he not out of bounds. Over. Caught in the real thick grass, but it's not very good. Uh, it's not the kind of a place where he's going to do anything but pitch it out, I would think. I've been there before, Ross. See how people want to go and see people in trouble? See how fast they that's run the, over there? That's the Christians <laughs> running, running over to see. Oh, let's see how bad it is. Christians and the Lions, Steve. Hail Irwin. Hales hit it way to the right. Very, very short and just uh, okay. a horrible drive in a long rough 210 yards from the green. He really looks tired, Ross. Those are tired swings he's making. Old fatigue. Here are the alphabetical scores, so pick out your favorite, your local professional, your friend, whatever. As we'll go right through the alphabet. That Jim Albus is a professional in the Met area, and he is a very fine golfer. And that's his little boy caddy for him during the tournament. Uh -huh. The Z is leading, Mr. Zeller. The last shall be first. Uh -huh. Well, if Fuzzy should win, that would make two very popular winners of major championships this year with Crenshaw and then Fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Big putt. Yep. Especially with Fuzzy in trouble back there. This could be a big swing here. Good roll. Good roll. Is it enough? Yes. Oh, my. What a putt. Game is on again. Game is on. Wow, we four under. Two behind Fuzzy, who may be in trouble. I don't, what would you call them, Norman Stormans? Uh, huh? <laughs> the 
gallery here behind Greg Norman. And we've had uh, what might be a rather significant change. However, let's not be too hasty. Fuzzy has been <laughs> in bad places before today and come out very nicely. And talk about a man due for a putt up here on this 14th green, it's Jim Thorpe. And a big putt for him. There's a couple of guys he's uh, stroke ahead of Hale and, and Curtis, who's almost finished there, uh, to be all alone at third place. This could help that cause quite a oh, bit. Oh, Jim. Not too bad. But he had had plenty of opportunity to fall way back into the pack, and he just refused to do it. All right. Now here is the problem that confronting or the position that Fuzzy Zeller is in off the tee at 14. And now let's get a report on it from Bob Rossberg. The ball is not sitting very well. Uh, Jack he does have a swing at it but I would seriously doubt if he do anything but wedge it out into the fairway. He can wedge it out within about 70 or 80 yards of the green if he gets it on the right side he'll have a nice pitch at it. Uh -huh. He just came up to me and he said I've gone to the well once too often I'm afraid. Oh ho a little doubt in his mind then huh. Well he has driven erratically the last few holes you know and uh, he's kind of gotten away with a lot. He's gotten away with a lot all day to tell you the truth. But Rossi he knows that uh, uh, Greg made the putt for three right. No I don't think so. Uh, he was not uh, very far off the tee when Greg hold that putt and I don't think he knows. I really don't believe that uh, that he knows he didn't uh, give me any indication or he didn't ask me I, I'm not sure that he that he wants to know he heard the applause that was came from the 14th green but I don't think he knew who it was for. Okay. All right, there he is. That's the tunnel through which he'll have to come. And this is another elevated green and trapped very nicely. They pulled that trap that you're looking at now around for the 74. Well, they, they lost that big elm that was to the left there, and they, and, uh, and it was irreplaceable. So they did widen that bunker or lengthen it around the edge of the green. Well, he hit it a little differently than I thought he would, but uh, now he's got himself the same kind of a pitch, but not from the, the correct side of the fairway. Uh, he's going to have a delicate pitch over the bunker now. Exactly. Now let's go ahead. Mr. Norman. Taking an iron off the 15th hole here. This is going to be right in the middle of the fairway, Jack, right at the crest of the hill. Well, the strategy there, Jack, is just as John said, it's the crest of the hill. If you drive it any farther, you're just going to be shooting from a downhill lie to a green that's up a little bit on you. Hale Irwin's third shot. Drove in the rough. Didn't, must not have had much of a lie. Oh, poor Hale. It's up on the 14th and three. And look at that. That tells you the whole story. This is Isao Aoki at the 18th. Here by special invitation. That was for bogey, and uh, he has that left now for double bogey. Would put him at nine over. Hmm? Yeah, that might be right on the borderline for the exemption for next mm -hmm. year. So that you would not have to qualify in some manner, whether through money winnings or performance of some sort. Fred Couples, who made a slight move earlier in the championship, he got it to even par or dropping back. This will be for par for Fred. All 
the gallery there waiting for the final fireworks on 18. Well, he was on the borderline and finishes now. 72 today, plus six. It's a good score. Mm -hmm. As Peter said earlier, anything 288 or better, you have played some golf. Now the shot facing Mr. Zeller. That's such a good look at it, too, from the player's viewpoint, because that lip of that bumper is a lot higher than you think. Pulled it a little. Oh, but yeah. Well, look it. at it come in. Pulled it right on land, <laughs> but no stop. Okay, that for a bogey. I mean, par. Aoki finished plus eight, which might not give him the exemption. They think seven might be it. Hmm? 287, 288. But more important, Fuzz needs that to keep mm -hmm. his two, two shot lead. 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 There's the story. Or if he doesn't make it to keep his two stroke lead, he needs to get some swing before he gets to 15 T. Because if you keep driving it in the rough, <clears throat> and that other man's driving it in the fairway. It's Curtis Strange to David, excuse me. No, it's. it's been, <clears throat> he uh, is plus one. He's in the middle of the 18th, having driven beautifully. Very underrated player, mm. Jack. He's a good hitter of the ball. Good simple swing. He had a swing to do very well here, I thought, coming in. And he has. Mm -hmm. One over. Is yeah. <laughs> any other time, uh, one over, and now he could be making up his acceptance speech. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Got a twin brother named Alan that played the tour for a while. It's now in the brokerage business. <laughs> All right, here is the man doing the chasing. Greg Norman. David, he, uh, he's he got about 175 yards. He's just an ideal position to, to fire right out the flag. I look for him to hit it pretty close. Well, I love the way he hits it, John. You need a high shot here on this hole. This is one man that can do it. This looks real good if it's the right length. Oh, oh my. He's past the pin with a lovely shot. Right? Good shot. Well, I know he's not real happy, but he is on in two, and he has no idea what this man's going through back at 14. But now, see him move. Mm -hmm. I mean, as soon it right as away. you see a player do that, it's like watching him go for the tee right away. You know, it was a good tee shot. This way, you know, he felt it had no chance. All right. A few deep breaths now for the first time for Fuzzy. Take a look at Norman in slow motion, David. Well, I like the way this man plays. Obviously, he's been very impressive. Good at the top. Now, watch that club there go right through. But the club face at the top, or the shaft of the club, I should say, was pointing right at his target as Curtis Strange makes that for four and 281. Oh, I'm sorry. I, it's fuzzy for that bogey fuzzy. there yeah. at uh, the hole Kurt, behind. Curtis in my mind. <laughs> but uh, good swing by Greg Norman. He looks like he does a little Michael Jackson there with that left foot, doesn't he? Well, that's not too bad either. He's he doing keeps all on right. balance. He's <laughs> making some money. And he's leading money winner this year, I think. And he's only wearing one glove, too. Well, here's the story. We have now just a one-shot lead by Fuzzy Zeller over Greg Norman as we get into the final holes here at Wingfoot in the United States Open. Let's take another look at, uh, at that swing of Norman and watch his foot. Okay, but at the top of the swing is great position for those of you at home that are trying to get your back swing in position. Now that club is pointed just where you want it to. Now if you just look down below at his right foot when he goes through a good lateral move. That's why his foot goes back that way. If he were to be outside and over the ball the foot would have been the other way which is the most common error. One of the most common errors that the weekend golfer makes. And of course Good solid result. Good finish on balance. Here's a diagram of the 15th. The only water on the course here is 15. That little creek going across there. As we look down from the blimp. 
There it is. There's the creek. And then uphill when you cross the creek onto this very long. And as Peter said yesterday, this screen is shaped like an electric light bulb. So we have word that Hale Irwin has bogeyed the 15th to go two over. Or the 14th, rather. It's a 15 T and fuzzy with the iron. That was a little better swing there, David, right in the middle of the fairway. Well, he, as, as you know from your experience playing, he needed a good swing. A little easier with that iron to make a good swing than with a driver. The last three holes going back into the wind here are just going to be three great holes, and we got two of the greatest players in the world playing them, but we really have something going. And only a shot apart. It may come down to that. Just who can put that ball in the fairway? They're both very long. And as it stands now, you, you've got to kind of figure, figure that Greg is swinging better, though he's one stroke back at this point. Downhiller just touched that. Look at it go. Does it have a chance? Does it have a chance? Oh, what a putt. If you finish a stroke behind, you might, that might be one of the strokes that you think about. Or maybe the little one he missed at the first hole. Those are the things you've got to put out of your mind after tonight. Mm, what a good putt. Curtis Strange at the 18th. Now, if he sinks this, he'll finish even, tied with Jim Thorpe. Speaking of Mr. Thorpe, they pick him up. Another birdie attempt for him. He's had all through the huh. back nine here, it seems, every hole. With the exception of 13, he has played just a fine round of golf. Get in there, Jim. Come on. No. Uh, well, you're putting downhill, and the last thing a player thinks of is they're going to leave it short. Now it's Curtis Strange. Par at 18, 72nd hole for Curtis Strange, 68 today, plus one for the tournament. Very nicely done. Great, great tournament. 281 around here, it's the lowest ever so far. Here's Jack Nicholas at 17 for birdie. He's had a long day. 6 over today. Birdie this yesterday with a magnificent second shot. Come in, come in. I do expect that we'll see him at St. Andrews, though, David, don't you think? Oh, yes. I hope I always see him at St. Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're turning for home. This is a 16. Dog leg left. Having a better position. Fabulous drive. Now, fuzzy. 
Second shot, 15. Oh, oh, nice shot. Nice shot. So that's the situation. Fuzzy Zeller with just one shot now from Greg Norman, and we'll be back to wing foot in a moment. Wing foot, and away at the top in the distance, the 15th hole. Down and down we go. Right in there. That's the 15th. And that lovely green and old Fred Corcoran's house there on the left, that white house, which stands so proud, the man who, well, was there when so much of professional golf and indeed baseball began. And that's the green right outside his house, this hole, 417 yards. And here's Fuzzy with uh, and Hale Irwin battling away and Fuzzy with, uh, well, what wouldn't he give to get this in? Because suddenly the whistling looks to be coming out of slightly drier lips. Uh, good speed, wandered down there a bit, but it's nice and tidy. That'll be another par. And if at the end of the day he stays just one ahead, that's as good as 10. 18th green, Johnny Miller finishing up. This for a birdie. Miller started today at two over par, now three over. So one over today, this for a round of 70. Fuzzy got his par. Now just five under. Will it turn? Yeah, I think it will. I think it will. So Miller brings the crowd to their feet on the 18th. Round today, in fact, 68. David Graham, who won this championship so beautifully a couple of years or so ago. Not been going so well today. This for a par now, nine over. Double bogey at the 16th, bogey at the 17th. These last three holes are where it's going to be won and lost today. That's there. Greg Norman now at the 16th. Second shot after that uh, very fine drive. Peter, he's got 200 yards, I guess four iron. Sounded like he chunked it, and he did. He pulled it way left. I better get the bunker, he's gonna be in deep trouble. Well, if he got in the bunker, that's a great break for him, because. It may not be in the bunker. It may be stuck on the bank in the long grass, and that looks to me as if it, I if it is in the grass, as if he's going to certainly lose a stroke here at the 16th. Because there's just nowhere to go. He'd have to settle for a five, really. No good trying to be too fancy with that. Well, I guess it would be a, would have been a great double, wouldn't it? The America's Cup and uh, Greg Norman winning this championship. He's making hard work of it at the moment certainly just one stroke in it now it's uh, really I suppose a two horse race but with uh, anyone really under the score of 290 here they played well there's the 16th and the little graphic and here's fuzzy on the tee oh and this is a good looking drive caught the tree though just nip the edge of the tree and drop down way short in the rough. I'll tell you, there is a bad break. You know, he's got so many good ones today, but all of a sudden something like that comes up and bites you. Uh, there, in there is Fuzzy having just clipped the trees and with just one stroke in it, there's a lot more golf to be played here today. Jack Nicholas walking at home, up 18 in the United States Open. 17 times he has finished in the top 10 in this championship. And Lee Trevino, his longtime 
opponent, and golf course friend. Remember their great playoff at Marion. Remember how many things about Nicholas. Four U.S. Open, five PGAs, it goes on and on. 19 major championships. But now back to the battle at hand. It's not their battle this time. This is Greg Norman with an almost impossible lie with his third shot on the par four, 16th hole. Unless you've had this, you have no idea how much downhill that is. And what? Oh. That Ooh. is. It's all. It's impossible to stop the ball short of the hole there. Uh, that is just great stuff. Now, just before that, as you watch him surveying his putt, Jim Thorpe, his playing colleague of the day, hit this on the sand. What? Hitting the cup and going up. When you talk about this being a game of fractions of inches, there was another example. Now, Norman still needing this for the par, though. Big putt with Fuzzy in trouble back yes. down 16. And Norman trailing by just one. This would be stealing a four here. Fuzzy watching. And he's done it. Remains four under par. A stroke out of the lead. Greg Norman and mark that one down as the hole that would have done it if he wins in the end. Well, a lot of holes make that up, but uh, we'll watch Jack at 18. Man, yep. what a four. Jack at eight over, six over on today's round. And he'll need that one for the par. Been a long day yes. at age 44. But you don't see that man <laughs> shoot 76 very often in the open. Now back to Fuzzy. When Fuzzy said to Bob a short while ago, to Bob Rosberg, I went to the well once too often, could he possibly have been talking about his back? Could be, I, I don't know. Rossi, is there any evidence in his swing or his manner that his back may be bothering him? No, none at all, Jim. I think what he meant is that he hit it into the into trouble once too often and yep. didn't catch a good lie. Uh, I tell you, he didn't get a very good break here, but he does have a perfect lie. The only problem is he's got about 235 yards huh. back to the flag. Now, he's in the short rough, and the ball's going to jump out of there a little, but he has to hook it just a shade. This is probably a one iron, possibly a two. Ross, if he doesn't, he catches that right-hand short bunker that you see. Now, he's really got a tough shot after that. That could be six out of that bunker today. I'll tell you, he's really nailed it. Right at it. What a shot. What a shot. There it is. A marvelous shot by Fuzzy Zeller under extreme pressure. Extreme pressure. The closing holes of the U.S. Open. You wonder wow. about players today? Yeah. Wonder about the scores they're shooting at Wingfoot. I mean, come on. Let's move over to the 17th tee. It's all so close together here. Here's Norman trailing by one. Another long par four, well over 400 yards. 444, in fact. That ball is fading in right into the trees. That is the worst shot he's hit today, fellas. What a time to do it. The pressure of the U.S. Open. Dave, how many years have we seen this happen? It, uh, it doesn't have to do with bad backs. It doesn't have to do with anything really except the pressure, does it? I mean, these men have almost foolproof swings. Well, as foolproof as you can get, yeah. but that's the game of golf there. Trevino needing this for a par at 18. He's five over for the championship, but in a tie for seventh place at the moment. So that'll drop him to six over par, and at the moment, uh, well, it'll drop him permanently one behind Marco Mira, who's already finished at five over for the championship. If he makes this, he'll be six over in a tie with Fred Couples and Tim Simpson. Still well within the re-invited category for next year. This year, he was in a special invitee. There a couple every year. This year, it was Trevino and Aoki. And they both deserved it. Oh, yeah. Okay, Lee Trevino down. <laughs> Trevino, start of the day two over, ends up six over, around a 74. Let's have another look at that shot that Greg Norman did. This is, it takes so much nerve to play this. Now the ball is down, you're, 
your weight is pitched forward on your toes. It's downhill, and he just played a shot you dream about. <laughs> Absolutely dream about. In a way, possibly, that took more than Tom Watson's pitch into the hole at Pebble Beach from 17. Well, well Watson had a better lie. I wouldn't want to make Middle America hot at me, but that was as good a shot. It just didn't go Ooh. in the hole. Now Nicholas needing this for the par. It would give him a round of 76 today. Showed some signs on the front nine that he might get it going, but never really did. Break. Hurry. And that's the way they've been going today. Bogey five, round of 77. For Jack Nichols. He and Trevino played them together one more time. Well, we've seen him have some very bad nine hole scores. Remember a couple beats one time? 45 on the back nine. And still trying to shoot 44. If you remember that last that's, hole, he was grinding on that putt. That's right. He never quits. But you don't see it often. His consistency has been one of the marvels of the game of golf. Not his year this time. It is the year of the shark and the fuzz. The pearly whites against the whistler. <laughs> the whistling at the moment, well, is it whistling past the graveyard or whistling in the dark? Or will he still hold on to that one stroke lead? Well, here's Norman with the problem this time. Uh, Jim, he is bad shape here. Okay, excuse me, we'll get right back to you. We're going to watch Fuzzy now. With his putt for a birdie after that marvelous trouble shot, but slow to even saw something. Yeah, slow down. Now look, well, we've got a pretty good look at the ball, and even from above, Oh. Okay, John. Any shot at all? <laughs> He's going to even have to manufacture a chip out here. He's right in the crotch of this tree. There's there's big roots on each side of it, and he's right in the middle of it. He's got to get a very abrupt backswing and a very abrupt follow through. Or he, if let's say he came to the ball with the club flying too flat, he'd hit that uh, root behind the ball, might whiff it. Mm. Now, if he doesn't get the ball up quick enough, it could hit the root in front of him. It could ricochet any place. Could it if it hits him too? Yeah. This, now, um, you it, know, it's, all right. It, if it hits him, of course, it's a two-shot penalty. Right. Mm. He's going to chip it out in the fairway, it looks like, but this is a very difficult shot. He played a marvelous shot just to get it out. Okay. I, I'm, honest to gosh. We well, believe you, John. <laughs> with a lie like that, you might say, well, that isn't fair, people would say. But I remember some years ago over the British Open, somebody said, the course is unfair. Do you think it's unfair, Jack Nicholas? He said, of course it isn't fair, but golf isn't supposed to be fair. In other words, the challenge is there and it's like life. Sometimes it takes a tough bounce for you. You just got to figure out how to play out of it. That's where but, he was. But think of that. I mean, you hit a bad drive. You don't necessarily have to get that bad a break that it goes where you can't do anything. You can't even take an unplayable because he's got to drop in the rough. Yes. Now, Fuzzy Zeller needing this for a par. Of course, Norman doesn't know that. He thinks he's the only one in trouble. A little right to left break, not much. Irwin made another bogey by the way. Okay. A putt there. What a four. But Hale Irwin made another bogey to go three over or eight over on today's round. Now, back to Norman. This will be his third shot on the par four. It's, it's not that, it's, excuse me, Jim. Yeah, go. It's not that difficult a shot in, in the sense that he's in the middle of the fairway and the pin's in the middle of the green, but the ball is below his feet. And I think he's getting, you know, obviously a little tense because he is approaching the end of the tournament. The tendency here is, of course, is to play for the ball to, to go to the right slightly, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if he misses the shot. He might possibly catch the heel and pull it. So he's got to really drive with the legs to keep that from happening. John Schroeder right out there with him. That's a really good looking golf shot. That's the right distance. It's going to be close. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Knock that in and 
will be tied for the lead, Mr. Norman. That is one tough young man there. Boy, I'll tell you, they're all wide awake in Australia watching this. No, excuse me, would not be tied for the lead unless Fuzzy gets his problems. Naturally, he lies three. He'll need that for a par. But what a four that would be. After the four that they both made it 16. That's right. <laughs> well, that, that told the story, didn't it? So, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Brings the smile back to the face of Fuzzy Zeller. There it is. That's the way they stand. Right now, here's a message from the United States Golf Association. Jim Thorpe. Well, how many bunkers has he been in here he looks recently? Like Thorpe of Wingfoot, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Lawrence of Wingfoot or something, Jack. He played them well. Another nice. That ball kind of skidded on him there. He's a little unlucky. That's another good bunker shot by Jim. Jim remaining at even par. And now, of course, Norman has this pressure putt to save par for himself to keep one stroke behind as Fuzzy on the left marches smack up this long green avenue of Wingfoot dead center in the fairway. This may be the biggest putt of young Greg Norman's life right here. Here is the way they stand if you've just uh, tuned in and this back nine has been a real dramatic show. Fuzzy had about a three or four stroke lead as they made the turn and now all of a sudden it has shrunk to one between this man and Mr. Zeller as Haler when the leader when the day began has fallen way back to three over eight stroke eight strokes off the lead. Norman is at the 17th fuzzy is in the 17th fairway right behind him. that he made at 16 and at 17. When you write your book, great cars you've seen, don't leave those two out. Don't leave those two out. Okay. Oh, my. Now, Fuzzy trying to get loose again. He yeah. saw it. I'm sure he's seeing everything right now. Oh. Now, Jim Thorpe. Who, as we have mentioned, had he he played close to the pin all day and uh, nothing went in for him. He could just put it a little bit. He'd have been right in the thick of it. Now he needs his putt. I mean, a, a third place finish, of course, uh, would be wonderful. I, I'm sure a lot of people would take that before you started. He's had the benefit of watching Greg's putt down the hill. There's not much break. Just won't do it for him today. Man. He the ball will not drop for him. That's when the game is hard. Oh, when you're doing everything right, huh? seemingly, and the ball won't go in the hole. And Greg, from impossible places, is getting the ball up and down. All right, back in the middle of the fairway, Hale Irwin at 17. Hale has a shot of about 195 yards. He's going with a two iron. He's just trying to get in. He just wants to stay out of Fuzzy's way and get in. And he's had a rough, rough day, believe me. You think the little bit of a weight there may kind of make Fuzzy a little nervous, Bob? Or I don't think it'll make him nervous. I'm not sure if he knows what that putt was for, though. You know, he might have thought it was for three. Could be. He was out in the middle of the fairway. He wasn't around anybody that could that could tell him.
There's a good shot there. And got hung up in the right fringe, though, Rossi, yeah. just the kind of day that Hales had to be eight over. Of course, this is, this, fuzzy. This, this is fuzzy with probably a five iron. I don't think he wants to hit anything easy at this time. Looks like he really went at it. Sounded heavy, Bob. I don't oh, know. Short in the right hand bunker. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The leader is in the bunker at 17. <laughs> Sounds like a World War II war report. <laughs> Fuzzy Zeller in the sand as we look at Norman at the 18th tee. Now, even though that's very near to 17, he doesn't know Fuzzy's in trouble. Well, he can't count on him making a bogey. Anyhow, you got to go ahead, make a four here, make the man finish with two fours to win. That is so far, it's scary. Now you might, now you might think Birdie. I'll tell you what, that's 300 yards into the wind. That's a mile again. That is a long, long way for Craig Norman here at the home hole of the United States Open. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, just two holes to go, and this is becoming one of the classic jewels in the world of golf. Been a few over the years, real head-to-head -head stuff, but here's Fuzzy, Fuzzy Zeller, the leader, the championship leader in the bunker at the 17th. They must get up and down in two from here to keep ahead. And that was a little bit ungainly. The old rhythm had gone. The old head came up, not an easy shot. But this really is boiling up into a 72nd hole finish. His nearest challenger, Greg Norman from Australia, has hit an enormous drive up the 18th. He's one behind Fuzzy, but Fuzzy has to hold. Have another look at this. Just watch the right shoulder come in here. He's played these, been so loose, the, the blade of the club is laid almost flat and parallel to the ground, very open. But just watch how he comes up and tries to heave it up with his body and lift it up. It was uh, not played with that nonchalant confidence we saw earlier. This can be a very punishing game. Not in the same way as boxing is or athletics or weightlifting, but mentally exhausting. Certainly for this man today, Hale Irwin dropped eight strokes to par today. It was his third shot. And suddenly they age before your very eyes. Whilst they prepare, let's have a look at this uh, enormous drive. John Schroeder said that uh, Greg Norman's drive at the 18th was 300 yards into the wind. Just watch the sheer animalistic power of this man. He's just over six feet tall, draws it back, but just when he comes to hit the ball, just go ow to yourself because this is enormous. The right foot slides away, it's punched through there. That's as hard as any Rocky Marciano blow or any other of your favorite champions. That is frightening. Jim Thorpe, the unluckiest man of the day, I feel. He had so many opportunities. The old uh, putter betrayed him a bit. That's short right, Peter. He didn't make a very good swing there. And he's you know how a, bad it is down there to the right. He's had an unlucky day, though, John. He sure has. I just think, uh, again, he's just probably worn out. He, tried, he played very well and just uh, couldn't get the ball to go in the hole. Now, here's what well, probably, for Fuzzy, one of uh, his most crucial shots of the day. It all comes down to the last few holes, unless you're coasting home eight or ten strokes ahead. This must go in to keep him ahead. Good line. That's my oh, it ran out of gas. Ooh, ooh. Now, there was nothing nervous about that. That was a brave putt. But it didn't drop, and now he and Greg Norman are tied at four under, with Norman already safely up the 18th fairway. And so, folks, there he is. That's Greg Norman looking at the green underneath our tower, behind the green at the 18th. What club's this, Bob? He's only got a six iron left. He's got 170 yards. Boy, I'm really nervous. <laughs> this is really exciting. Well, John, I should say, that's John Schroeder out there. I don't think he, oh, he hit the worst shot of the day. He hit it fat, and it's going to go on the bleachers, for God's sake, if you can believe it. 
Unbelievable. They're cheering up there. They got to be crazy. I think the open isn't making these guys a little nervous. Well, I don't know, but if if that is cheering uh, because he's played a bad shot or because it's bounced on the green, I don't know. It may have ricocheted back onto the green. Well, I think somebody caught it up there on the fly in the stands. Oh, somebody caught it. Well, there you are. Well, uh, it was a good catch. You know what, Peter? This could be the most crucial play of the whole tournament, where he gets to drop the ball to play his third. That was a very nervous shot uh, from Norman. I can't imagine him making such a poor swing after making such a tremendous drive. Where will he drop it, uh, well, John? Do you know? Where's I, Frank uh, Hannigan? I have no idea where they have. I imagine near the uh, grandstands. Well, we will we'll, we'll have the expert with us, Frank Hannigan, in just a moment. But that really was a stinker. Or oh, is that P.J. Boatwright moving in there? And there, what a catch! Just like a foul ball in baseball. <laughs> that's exactly. I mean, that's what you call it. The way he hit it, a foul ball. Well, this, this uh, broadcast has been beamed all around the world. And what a moment to show all this drama. Let's hear it. Okay. Here's Frank Hannigan, just joined us now. And Frank, tell us, uh, where can he drop this, do you think? Well, the, the bleacher is a temporary immovable obstruction. In other words, he's going to get to drop away from it without penalty. He uh, is being uh, consulted with <laughs> by the two great experts, Fuzzy there on 18T. Well, let's just see Fuzzy drive, because he needs this on the short stuff. Yeah. Get out there. Get out there, baby. And he's done just that. Beautiful drive, Peter. I'll tell you, it went a little left, but you know, he got away with it. But it was a great, great drive. And he has the best angle you could possibly have into the hole. That's the voice of Bob Rosberg. And that's how they stand. Zeller and Norman are level. They're tied at four under par. But Greg Norman, the moment of truth came, and he fired it away into the stand on the right. And now it's picked a spot. Now, Frank, what, is, what are the options here, Frank? Well, he doesn't have an option. He just gets to drop in one place. It's the nearest place that avoids uh, the, uh, the obstruction. And uh, that place evidently has... Uh, has already been determined. I can't see whether he's dropped the ball or not. Now, Frank, he's been lucky here in one way because if those uh, bleachers, grandstand, call it what you will, had not been there, he might have been another 30 or 40 yards to the right. So he's dropping it there. He's still got a very difficult shot, but th <laughs> that is one of the curses of modern golf. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's just a very, very good break. Uh, but of course, the key thing here is he, this is his third stroke. Uh, he needs to get up and down to make his par. Yes, and I would say from there, well, I don't know. I'd, I'd give him, I'd give him ten goes, and if he got down in two once, I think he would be a miracle maker. You can see. He's well down below the hill. He's got to pitch up about ten or twelve feet. Very little green. To pitch onto anything short is going to stick anything firm is going to run to the far side of the green if he gets this within 15 feet it'll be a miracle and it didn't roll back and he's still not certain of getting down in two from there and he might well have just lost the championship he has no idea really what's going on fuzzy's lighting up a smoke or two though he's not he's just a social smoker just shows you that he's not quite as loose as uh, he was just asking uh, them what's what is what is going on here incidentally we were saying how many countries were taking this and for for those countries that have stayed up late well just look at uh, Jim Thorpe's pitch though up first at the 18th this is his third shot from very deep rough and he's played a, a very good shot but only within 15 feet or so we're saying around the world, viewers staying up late. Nick Faldo from Great Britain, 72 today, 296. Gary Player from South Africa, 76, 294. Oosterhaus, a 75, 290. Sevi, a 75, 291. And Aoki from Japan, a 74, 288. A playoff would be over 18 holes tomorrow. Should there be one? But at this moment, if I were a betting man, and I'm not, sir, my money is now, it's been ebbing and flowing all day. 
back on Fuzzy. Greg Norman needs this. Have a look at uh, that slow motion swing of Greg Norman's on the second shot. I mean, th th it really was such a bad shot. It looking from here, it's gone at least 50 yards to the right. He's only got a medium, medium long iron, a five iron or so, and he was just so open. The, the blade of the club was just so open and away. It was never, there was just lack of rhythm into the crowd, caught by one of the spectators very bravely. And now he's playing four. Leaving the flag. Dave, this putt down the hill, uh, what about this one? You wouldn't care to name the odds on getting this in one, would you? No, thank you. Plus, uh, he's got to try not to make six. Yeah. I mean, the dilemma here, or you want to make it, obviously, you want to make all of them. But if he gives it a wrap, Peter, it's going to go five or six feet back. It's not bad looking putt, though, is it? Can you believe it? Do you think that some things are fate and some things are meant to be because you can't do any better than that? That is almost awesome and godlike. Fuzzy, he may think he's made a birdie. I don't know what Fuzzy thinks. He'll I, I doubt that sick. seriously, Peter. Uh, but uh, would you like to go over the three fours that man just made? <laughs> At 16, 17, uh, 18? You can't make one four out of the three. No. I think it, it's just incredible. And that, when you try and explain to non-golfers what this game's all about and how it can change, it, it's seemingly such a passive game. He surrenders. He sur <laughs> <laughs> that is marvelous, you see. That is something uh, that doesn't happen in too many other sports and Greg responding. I accept. And the people, uh, yeah, I certainly do. Can yeah. I have that in writing, please? That's right. This Your really putter, is, please. This really is terrific stuff. Uh, and for all those people around the world that are seeing it, whether it's live or on tape, from Italy to Wanganui. Well, what do you fantastic. think Thorpe is thinking about all this? Oh. He can't buy a putt, and these guys are coming at him from every angle. This is to finish, this putt to finish at 2-8-1. One. one over par. Stay up, stay up, come on. No, he's just been beaten into submission all day long and the gods have been against him. But 282, if this little putt goes in, is very fine playing indeed. But of course that just takes him. Curtis totally Strange tiptoes up, I think. Does he tiptoe up into a tie or does Jim finish third on his own? I still can't believe that putt of Greg Norman's. There's no way to make that putt. I I mean, you think of under that pressure, Peter, and, and you've had many putts of pressure, and so has Rossi and Schroeder, and man. It's amazing, and just look at this. This is how short uh, Hale Irwin's tee shot was compared to Greg Norman's at the last hole. Out with a little wood for his second shot. The man who won here 10 years ago. Hale I don't Irwin. think that's a little wood, Peter. I think that's a big one. And it's a great a shot. shot. You think Fuzzy would trade? I think he would, yes. I got a hunch Fuzzy's going to hit a good shot here. What's he going to hit, Ross? I would think this is a six iron. I would think he'd want to hook it into the hill and leave it above the hole. And boy, what a shot he's hit. Oh, a splendid shot. A splendid shot. It really is quite unbelievable this day. Let's have another look at this. J David, you know this. This is quite extraordinary. It, you, it, it's four or five feet left of the hole at one time. Isn't yes, it? and then uh, about ten feet short of the hole, you're going almost straight downhill. This, folks, was for a four for Greg Norman at the last hole. It now starts to turn and disappear. Fuzzy looking on, the crowd going crazy. Very fortunate, of course, to uh, hit a very bad second shot into the into the stand, into the crowd, get a drop. But to get down in two from there is well, it's almost cheating. Jim, you, have you got your breath back from watching all this? Hardly, really. Just absolutely marvelous golf and marvelous sportsmanship.
but we've seen here today the crowd cheering for the Australian ever bit as much as for the Americans the players themselves showing that this is sport for them it's still a game despite its tremendous importance fuzzy waving the white flag and mock surrender from the fairway and Greg, and Greg Norman answering with it with his arms upraised the kind of sportsmanship that many games used to be known for a game that tennis used to be known for as Peter said yesterday used to be the gentleman's game today golf is one of the few strongholds of true sportsmanship and they all can be proud of it Jim I don't know what time it is in Australia but if that didn't wake everybody up that four he made uh, the last hole they're all there now uh, it just makes you tingle it really does and it makes you so pleased to see it just the plain good behavior no one has ever birdied the last hole of the United States Open to win the title it has never had to make had a to. birdie right. to win and done it and that's the quote the man who came up with that statistic was the man who had the home in the 14th hole here Fred Corcoran every year he used to point that out to us and would he love to be here today the late Fred Corcoran Norman checking his scorecard must be hard to concentrate on it well he wants to get oh. You know he's got a while to do that he's he's also going to keep about half an eye out on what fuzzy's doing unless fuzzy makes this putt and if he gets down to two if he doesn't make it we will be back tomorrow for 18 holes the first playoff in nine years that's the longest spell without a playoff in the history of the u.s open hale irwin here of course finishing up just such a bad round today started five under is now four over He'll need the next one for 79. And he'll probably go and finish that out, provided he doesn't interfere with Fuzzy's line. It's uh, too bad for Hale. But it's a little different finish than uh, he had 10 years ago, which under much happier circumstances. Now, Fuzzy's got some problems, Jim, in that he has a very swift putt going down that hill. So does he go for it, or does he lag? What do you think? Well, I was always a lag putter in the first place, and I certainly would not want to leave myself one of two or three feet that I might have to work over after the after Greg performed those three miracles on me in a row at 16, 17, and 18. Well, 65 or 55 years ago, when Bobby Jones won here, he had to make a 12-footer on this last hole to go into a tie and force a playoff, and he made it. There's Norman. Uh, White teeth are covered with grim lips right now. And There's nothing he can do about it. I mean, if the man makes it, you go over and you say, nice going, Fuzzy. If he doesn't, he's still alive. This putt, big swing right to left. And fast down by the hole. That should be below nope. the hole. Nope, nope. Hold it, hold it. Oh. And that one left to force the tie. Just Ooh. For, for my tired old nerves, that wouldn't be one that <laughs> I would want to have. Now, the good news is there shouldn't be any break, and it's uphill. Again, no sudden death playoff for the U.S. Open. 18 holes tomorrow. And I think the sound has ceased to come from the lips. They're first, but nothing's coming out. They're not coming from my lips either. No. I, I, uh, it would be a terrible thing for Fuzzy, obviously, if he were to. Well, we're not even going to think about that. Straight in, Fuzz, up the hill. If there's a playoff, we'll be live with it at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Enough said. Here is the tournament. That's right. He's done it. Fuzzy Teller with an even par round of 70 after getting a three under at the end of the front nine. He goes back three over. A smile for his playing companion, Hale Irwin. Again, the sportsmanship of Irwin after a miserable round. And here, Norman. Let's see if we can hear this. Okay. Little, there you go. The hubbub. <laughs> Boy, will that be something tomorrow? Two great sportsmen going at it. 18 holes for the national championship of American golf. There it is. 
Teller four under, Norman four under. Curtis Strange ends up third. Then Johnny Miller and Jim Thorpe tied for fourth. Hale Irwin sixth. Peter Jacobson and Mark O'Meara tied for seventh. Well, we've got to talk to those guys <laughs> before we get out of here. No question about it. It's been a wonderfully thrilling four hours almost at this point that we've had here today. Again tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern time. It will be live playoff coverage tomorrow for the 84th U.S. Open Golf Championship. But don't leave yet. Greg, you're in the history books. How do you feel? Well, at the moment, Jack, I think I'm a little stunned because I worked very hard for my pars over the last three holes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, coming down 16, I said, just don't give up. Just determination um, is the key to success, I think. And I just hung in there. I <clears throat> played a couple of good recovery shots, and the putt on the last was something else. Well, the last three pars are the most remarkable succession of pars I've ever seen. I think we speak, I speak for the whole broadcast team here. Dave Marr, who was a pro here at Wingfoot all these years, what you did at 16, 17, and 18 is memorable. Yeah, I think uh, 17 was probably the big factor there. I just let my drive get away to the right. And, uh, you know, when I walked down there and found the ball in that position, I said, hey, just forget about it. We've made tougher fours than this before. And, uh, you know, I just my main concern was then was get the ball back in play. And then I hit it just a perfect six iron into the green. How about the second shot at 18? Were your adrenaline going too much on you or what? Well, as I got, I started to tense up just as I started to take the club away. And, uh, you know, I was feeling great. I was really feeling confident I could knock it in there close and you know it was adrenaline uh, probably got me tight on my backswing and I just came on short on my swing and bailed out of it and uh, you know just uh, one of those things I suppose one of the bad shots I hit all day. Now let's talk a minute about the, let's talk about an hour and a half about that putt you just sank. <laughs> <laughs> now you've heard about Bobby Jones here and, and this putt he sank which yours was about twice as long. Well, you know, it was a putt that uh, I didn't want to look at it too much. I knew it was just a yeah. speed putt. I had to feel it. I just got over the ball. I just had a quick look at it and uh, made sure I hit it at the right speed. And I picked out the mark on the green, and that was it. Perfect. And there it is. We're going to watch it again and watch it go. This is a scarier than a Stephen King novel, this putt, <laughs> I will tell you. And you just read it absolutely perfectly and struck it absolutely perfectly. Yeah, it's one of those things, Jack. And Fuzzy standing back there waving the yeah. <laughs> waving the white tails. Like, Don't give up, you know. But uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I think we'll have a lot of fun. Oh, I think it's going to be a memorable battle tomorrow between the two of you. And how do you like your gallery here that have adopted? Well, I think. Uh, thank you. I think uh, ever since I've come to America, Jack, the people have just been fab fabulous to me, and uh, I just feel like I'm playing in front of my home crowd, and it just makes me feel great. Well, it's very great, and thank you for an awful lot of thrills today, and good luck tomorrow, Greg. Right. Thanks, Jack. All right. All right, back to you, Jim, for the moment. Okay, so the American crowd has adopted the man from down under. He couldn't be further from home, and yet he says he feels like he's right at home. His fellow countrymen watching all this on television. Fuzzy Zeller, the Hoosier, against the Aussie tomorrow at 18 holes. Fuzzy Silk checking his scorecard, signing a signing a <laughs> visor for somebody. Oh, and both of them performed such feats on the fairways today. Fuzzy seeming to shake down the last few holes. Norman getting into trouble, saving pars. Uh, the, the, here was the almost unbelievable little tiny pit shot that Norman made on 16, Dave. Well, these are so much harder to hit than a 300-yard drive. I mean, this required so much courage, touch, skill, everything. And he played just a shot of his dreams. But this is only one of the shots that he did on the last three holes. The putt at 17, uh, you know, downhill, breaking right to left, perfect speed. Watch this. Just sneaks in the hole. What a four after being right against a tree off the tee. Had to pitch out. And if those of you at home, particularly young people, would like to know how to act when you play games and sports, just watch the two men who battled today and will battle tomorrow. Jack? All right, here's one of them, Fuzzy Zeller, the other half of what promises to be the most exciting match tomorrow. How do you feel? Oh, Jack, I feel wonderful. Uh, <laughs> it's like all U.S. Open courses. I wasn't able to drive the ball straight enough on the back nine, and it cost me, and uh, I kept on uh, Bob Rosberg out there. I've gone to the well once too often. Uh, it eventually caught up with me. Well, you made it very interesting, I'll say that. <laughs> but you, you were there at the end like you had to be. Well, again, uh, on this last putt here, I didn't want to leave the putt way up on top of the hill trying to hit a dire. So I figured uh, I'd just hit it. And if I don't, you know, if, I, if it doesn't stay up for me, at least I'll have an uphill second putt, which is uh, a pretty easy putt. 
How about tomorrow? What will you what will you come out doing tomorrow? Just swinging from the heels again? Well, uh, first of all, I hope to get some sleep tonight. Uh, no, Jack. I, again, you just uh, you can't really play Greg that much. Uh, I've got to go out and try to beat the course, and uh, hopefully Greg won't make as many putts, uh, and we're going to have a good time. I mean, you bet you are. You gave us a good time today. Thanks very much. Fuzzy Zeller, and now back to Jim McKay again. So Norman said we'll have some fun tomorrow. Zeller said we'll have a good time tomorrow. At stake, the national championship of golf and $94,000 for the first prize. But it's still a game. What a great afternoon it's been. There is the trophy on which the winner's name will be inscribed. We could have, <laughs> you just wish they could keep on playing and playing and playing. And that's what they will do tomorrow. We will be here live in this case for the 18 hole playoff starting at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. I hope all of you can think of an excuse to get out of work. Or school or whatever it is to tell you the truth <laughs> and uh, and be with us because this is going to be something let's have one more look at one of the great putts really in the history of the US Open Championship I think we can fairly say that Dave you might say in the history of golf certainly in the history of Australian golf <laughs> this is going to go down have this stuffed and mounted and put it Royal Melbourne or somewhere only one Australian has ever won the US National Open Championship and that was David Graham Well, to sum it all up with the most expert comment I can think of, wow. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arling. Coverage of the 84th United States Open Golf Championship was produced by Chuck Howard and directed by Terry Jastrow, Jim Jeanette, and Bob Goodrich. The update unit directed by Bob Lanning. The technical directors were Werner Gunther, Gary Larkin, Rich Gelber, and Bob Bernstall. Associate producers Ben Harvey and Bob Rossberg, Jr. And the associate directors Jack Graham and Barbara Donahue. The following is a presentation of ABC Sports. This year from Sarajevo, Yugoslavia to Los Angeles, California, the ABC Olympic tradition continues. What a summer it should be. ABC Sports touring America and journeying across the sea to bring you the great golf championships of the world. The U.S. and British Opens, the PGA Championship, the Women's Open, and the U.S. Amateur. A summertime of golf to remember. A late Sunday afternoon in June and a moment to remember. Greg Norman of Australia hunched over a 40-foot putt at the 72nd green of the U.S. Open Championship yesterday. Almost certainly needing to make it to have any chance of forcing a playoff for the title. It was a putt that had experts wagging their heads. No way to make it, they said. But Norman didn't know that and stroked his way into golf history with a putt that he later said he really felt he would make. At age 29, on his first full year on the American tour, he had a shot at the national championship. He looked back down the fairway toward the only man who could beat him. That was Fuzzy Zeller, who thought the putt had been for a birdie. Zeller took his towel and waved it in mock surrender believing he now needed a birdie to tie. He only needed a par, and he made it, forcing a playoff today. It had been a long, draining afternoon of competition, but in the end, two sportsmen had nothing but admiration for each other, and today they're meeting man-to-man -man at 18 holes for the U.S. Open Championship. Well, 
There they are on the 14th tee, Fuzzy Zeller of the United States and Greg Norman of Australia playing off for the U.S. Open Championship. What we had thought might be a classic confrontation has been anything but that to this point. As you see, Norman is three over par through 13 holes. Zeller is two under. In other words, there's five shots between them with just five holes left to play. Fuzzy Zeller looking very much at this moment like the new United States Open golf champion, but remember, the last four holes are the most difficult on the golf course. Stranger things have happened, but it certainly doesn't look likely right now under damp, uh, kind of depressing skies here, a contrast to yesterday's tremendous excitement. They were calling for thunderstorms, no sign of them yet, and there was a drizzling rain earlier, but it hasn't rained for some time. There's Fuzzy. Just catching the edge of the rough, but it looks like sitting up pretty well. There's his card so far, to, far today. The birdies in red. You see, birdie the first two holes really jumped out to a quick lead, as you will see. Bogey the third. Since then, it's been all pars except for a birdie on the par 5 12th hole. Now, Greg Norman started out with a birdie. They matched birdies on the first hole, but on the second, remember that Zeller had a birdie, and here you see that Norman had a double bogey six, and suddenly there were three shots between them. From there, it's been all pretty much downhill for Norman as he tees off on 14, 418 yard par four. Bob Rosberg's out there. Well, this ball is a little short, uh, Jim. Uh, it almost looked like he must have gone with something else but a driver. Okay, so Norman still having his problems. They, they move toward the finish of the playoff. Today's live coverage of a playoff for the 84th United States Open Golf Championship, an ABC Sports exclusive, is being brought to you by Team Xerox, the right products and right people all working together, by USF&G Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto, and life all across the USA, by the investment firm of Smith Barney, they make money the old-fashioned way, they earn it. By Michelob, one smooth and mellow taste tells you that some things speak for themselves. The second shot for Greg Norman on the par for 14th hole at the Wingfoot Golf Club. Playoff for the U.S. Open Championship, he trails by five. This is a six iron, Jim. Thank you, Bob. Going to the right. Down off the side of the green. Yeah. Right distance, but very far offline. He just doesn't seem to have had the tempo at all today, does he, Bob? No, I think the second hole just killed him. Uh, the, the putt that Fuzzy made at the second hole really hurt Greg. And uh, he, he really hasn't played like anywhere near like he played the two days that I watched him. A putt over 50 feet long, wouldn't you say, that Fuzzy made at the second? Oh, I think so, yeah. It was between 50 and 60 and kind of downhill at that. You know, it looked like he might three putt and he made it. Norman, of course, made a double bogey on the same hole. Now Fuzzy's second shot. This is a nine iron from out of the rough. Right at the middle of the green. Beautiful shot. A little long. Just on the putting surface, however. Zeller by five, and they're running out of holes. Back at wing foot for the playoff, Norman against Zeller. It was such a tremendously exciting competition yesterday as they played down the final holes. It has not been that way today, ever since the second hole when there was the three-shot swing between them. Fuzzy Zeller has been moving along relentlessly, and Norman has never gotten his tempo back. He had birdied the first. They both birdied the first. It looked like it was going to be extremely exciting. Here he's missed the green again. And has chipped up, you know, way short and left, as you can see. Well, I'm Jim McKay reporting from Wingfoot at the moment, along with Dave Marr, our expert on the sport, a man who uh, worked here at Wingfoot for three years in his very, very early days. Um, not, not too much to say about this, Dave, really. 
Well, I feel that Greg's shots, uh, the, the reason he's so far behind, really were self-inflicted. He played a smart shot at two because he had a bad drive, then he three-putted after Fuzzy made that and dropped three shots in one hole. Then he gets up, uh, Fuzzy's in a bunker at three, and he three-putts that green to let Fuzzy get away with a tie. Bad shot at the fourth hole, another bogey. And then he three-putts the fifth hole. So three out of the first five holes he three-putted. If he two-putts those, let's say, then he's only two shots back at this point. So really, I think he did a damage to himself, lost his composure and looked nothing like he did yesterday putting. You're talking about all those three putts. This is a man who sank a impossible 40-foot putt yesterday. And we are also told, by the way, that the one that Fuzzy made on the second today has been measured, we are told, at 68 feet, not 50 feet. Here he is putting for another birdie. And looking very, very good. In the hole, a birdie three to give him at least a six-shot lead, at least. Greg Norman has a long putt to make for his par. If this were a fight, they'd stop it. I mean, this is really criminal what's happening out here now. It breaks a little from right to left, as you just saw. But, I mean, he's so smooth and relaxed now, and he's a relaxed player anyhow. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, just get me to the church on time. Well, interesting that in 1929, there was a playoff for the U.S. Open Championship here at 36 holes, but Bobby Jones won it by 23 strokes over Al Espinosa. Let's bring in our colleague here, Jack Whitaker. Your impression on this, Jack? Well, you just mentioned it. History is repeating itself, isn't it? Bobby yeah. Jones had a, I think, a very snaky 12-foot downhiller to get the tie. Greg Norman sank a 24-footer snake last to get the tie, and... The same result. It's very distressful, I know, for all of us to watch, Greg. It just seems that all the magic went out of it yesterday and there wasn't anything left Monday morning. That's right. Well, it's going to be a two-stroke swing. He is now going to trail by seven shots. Seven shots with four holes to play. There is almost no way you can make those up on the closing holes at wing foot or anywhere else for that matter. Let's have a look now at that putt. Whether it was 68 feet or 60 or 70 feet, it was long. Look at this starts to break right about now. This is just uh, a miracle to make a putt this long, and what a time to do it. Now, Greg is only 15 or 20 feet above the hole there. You can see where he's put his ball down, and he's there in three. Now, he got a little aggressive and knocked it about six or eight feet by him, missed it coming back, and he did the same doggone thing the next hole, and then it was all over. Almost as if Fuzzy was saying, you made a 40-footer yesterday, try this one on for size. That's <laughs> great white, sh oh, great white shark. <laughs> well, we're gonna have shark fin soup tonight, it looks like, he, the Fuzzy one has is, is really had a good day, but as I said, that's such a terrible start and you can't give players of this caliber that many strokes on you, no matter how good a player you are. And, and Greg, uh, no matter what he does today, has done something not very many people have ever done and that's tie for a National Open Championship. Well, there are only two major championships where they still have 18-hole playoffs the next day. That's the United States Open and the British Open Championship. What do you think about it? Well, I think uh, with the way the game has grown and so forth, we look at 15 green there, that, that there ought to be something done. I, I, uh, I can argue either way. I kind of think uh, as long as they're there and the people are in place to figure out maybe a three-hole playoff or four-hole sudden death playoff, something maybe a little different than one hole, but to get it over with on Sunday. I really feel that way. Certainly a difference in mood between the tremendous excitement of yesterday and today. And so often in 18-hole playoffs, it seems like somebody does get off to a fast start. Jack was saying a while ago, like in a horse match race, it often happens. Whoever gets in front gets out there and stays there. Right? And two, don't forget, you have to start well here, Wingfoot, because those early holes can kill you as they have killed Norman here. They're not easy starting holes. One, two, three, and four. No wind at all out there today? It's perfect weather, actually, at this point. It was misting or, or raining just a little when they started, but it didn't bother either one of them. As I said, Greg did the damage to did more damage to himself than Fuzzy has done to the golf course with three three putts in the first five holes. However, should Fuzzy par in from here, he's got to shoot 67, which is not what you call shabby right, at doing right. for it. All the long par fours ahead of them out to move to the conclusion of the U.S. Open. There you see the ball smack in the middle of the fairway this time, but it's seven shots between them. The clubhouse at Wingfoot, 
We are on the playoff for the championship of the United States Open, and this is the 15th fairway, and the man leading by seven shots, Fuzzy Zeller. Tonight, ABC's Monday Night Baseball. The Yankees against the Tigers or Texas against California. Two rather attractive games, so check your local listings. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. This is an elevated green, and of course he's sitting from about the same height. Got to try to play a little cut shot if you want to in there. I don't know what Fuzzy's done, but Bob Rosberg is out there, and he's looking left, Rossi. Well, he played a little cut, but it's awful good. I kind of <laughs> like it. <laughs> ah, yes. That was a seven iron from about 160 yards. Beautiful looking shot. Hey, whatever, you know, whatever you can say about Greg kind of giving it away, but uh, he has made it easy on Fuzzy, but Fuzzy's played a great round of golf. I, if you shoot 67, Ross, I think you're going to win, but Greg dug his own hole by all those three putts there. It's he nothing. certainly did. All right, second shot. Just about has to birdie every hole in. Well, he's got to hole one out, too, or something. <laughs> I mean, Fuzzy is just making pars and birdies since the third hole. This is way like right. It. This Doesn't this like isn't it. even close to the green. Almost missed the bunker to the right. It's funny what a difference a day makes. But he seems so relaxed. He was relaxed last night uh, after he sank that tremendous putt at 18. He seemed to be very relaxed uh, this morning when he came into the clubhouse. Uh, matter of fact, he was very relaxed when I talked to him this morning. Greg, did you sleep well last night? I did, Jack. I had a relaxing night's sleep. I had dinner. Fuzzy was next door to me at the table at the restaurant there, so he was trying to fill me up full of wine and stuff like that. But we, we had a good night. <laughs> and here is Fuzzy Zeller's reaction to that story about what might or might not have happened last night. My wine bill last night was about $300. I'm not saying he drank a lot, but um, it was just he and his wife there. <laughs> But uh, we're going to have fun out there. And like, like Greg says, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. And uh, we'll shake hands, still be friends afterwards. Well, Fuzzy's having some fun out here today. I can't think it can be too enjoyable for Greg Norman. Uh, in, uh, there's so much adrenaline, perhaps, in your body, David, or what? Your rhythms go? Well, uh, <clears throat> Shock, as you said, he was relaxed. He plays a smart layout shot there at the second hole, and then Fuzzy makes that long one and then he jabs it by and misses it coming back that's a shock to your nervous system yeah. and from then on he's never quite had the speed whether it's chipping or putting mm -hmm. and if you can't chip and putt in this game you can't play you can't score for sure all of a sudden he was <laughs> faced with you know 10 and 12 foot putts that he had to make the whole par and it really or gets to you to not lose any shots not lose any shots yeah cannot no one can putt that well jack you just can't keep making them there he is in the bunker at 15. You get an idea of the height. Setting up quite nicely, though. Well, you'd hope, because if you ever bury any balls in these bunkers, <laughs> you're going to have to play backwards. Now, he can't see. He can just see the top of the pin from there. No wing foot being a member here that is straight downhill as you come out of that bunker. Really have to know how to play a bunker shot here and have a good lie in order to get ball close. That's what I thought Jim Thorpe did so well yesterday. Mm -hmm. The number mm -hmm. of really wonderful bunker shots he played. But now Craig Norman is faced with another one of those putts just to hold par. Which to me makes uh, Zeller's putt that much easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's almost as it was at 14 when we came on live. Uh, especially with a seven-stroke lead. Oh. My goodness. Can uh, Let's talk about your golden parachute. Hmm? <laughs> well, Fuzzy's got still got to keep his mind on yes. what he's doing. <clears throat> I mean, it's easy to wander and think of all the good things that are about to happen to you. Right in. And just... <laughs> well, he can just play for the middle of every green going right in now as they make this turn for the next three holes. Are... 
Rather difficult. He's looking a little fatigued here, isn't he? Beginning to show a bit. He's smiling, but it's a concentration will take it out of you. That had to be a long night for both of them. <laughs> I don't care how calm a person is. You're playing for the biggest championship of your life. And, uh, you know, what, at what time do you go to bed when you don't play golf till 145? Mm -hmm. When do you get up? <laughs> Things that Hale Irwin said the other day. How do you manage your time between yesterday when you finished and 145 when you got to hit it for serious again? That's been Whoa. it all day. That's exactly what he did on the front nine. Three putted, three greens on the front. Now this is an in for bogey. Yesterday he putted like an archangel, and today he looks like me out there in some <laughs> greens. And it's, uh, but that's the game, isn't it? It's, yeah. Uh, bogey, five over. Gives uh, Fuzzy now an eight-stroke lead, and here's a message from the United States Golf Association. Well, the story is simple to tell. Just look at it on your screen. Fuzzy Zeller three under par after 15 holes. Greg Norman five over, eight shots between them, and three holes to play. Would you figure he could make three double bogeys and still win in all probability? I do. Uh, if if he made, even if he made three sixes, which would be six over, yeah. Greg would have to make a couple of birdies in here in the two out of the last three holes. But what miracles and what great thrills he gave us yesterday on these last three holes. This hole is 452 yards long, par four. They're all par fours. They're all long coming in, and he's missed the fairway again. Seems to be sitting up fairly well, though, Bob. Well, it's not too bad, but it's a very long shot. The fuzzy hit a perfect drive right down the middle of the fairway. So we're going to look at it on tape right now. Cheering them on. Everybody likes a winner. Everybody likes Fuzzy anyway, I think. Oh, well, they li like both of them because yeah. they're both very outgoing, personable people. There's a look at the 16th hole, and we'll be back to see more of the action on it in just a minute. Fuzzy Seller, second shot on 16, leading by eight. Boy, Playoff. and what a shot he's hit, Jim. Oh. My goodness. What marvelous golf he has played this afternoon under the heavy skies of Westchester County. Very possible for yet another birdie. He's three under for the day. He is two under on the back nine now. And there's the contrast with Greg Norman. You see his numbers right there. He's now one over on the back. He did have a birdie on 12, but he bogeyed 14 and 15. And it's hard to kind of keep playing now, too, Jim. I mean, you realistically don't have any chance. You just want to get in. You're somewhat embarrassed sometimes. But this man should not be embarrassed. Discouraged, maybe, but not embarrassed. There's another on the beach. Well, they had, what, 50, 122 entries? He beat all but, <laughs> all but one. He beat all but one. That's not too bad a, a showing. And for the scheduled 72 holes, he tied him. That's right. But he's going to be looking back on today and wondering what in the world did happen. Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports, the WBC World Lightweight Champion, the former American Olympian Howard Davis, going against Edwin Rosario. And that will be live from San Juan, Puerto Rico. And the special report on the U.S. Olympic track and field trials now going on in Los Angeles, California. Maybe you didn't notice that Carl Lewis qualified for the 100 meters and for the 4x100 relay yesterday. Calvin Smith didn't make it for the 100 meters team, but he did for the relay. The Olympic trials are a very dramatic and final thing. 
just as the U.S. Open is, or the Olympics themselves. They say be there on a certain day, and if you're fit and ready to qualify, you can. Otherwise, see you around. Well, it'll be all ceremonial applause as he approaches each green from now on for Fuzzy Zeller. Trophy waiting for him at the end of it all and a first prize of $94,000. And for the first time, he lets a little smile start. Well, you got to. Yeah, you just, you want to finish and play well. And talking about playing well, we, we've talked a lot in the past about David Graham's fine 67 finish at Marion. And I say this, this man has played almost as good a round as David did there as we look at his uh, not too sterling open record. No, not sterling at all. <laughs> uh, up to here, look at that, didn't make the cut last year. The best he's ever done is tying for 15th in 1982. But this year he will be the champion. Did you notice, by the way, there's nobody else on the golf course. Nobody else will follow them today, but he still fixed the ball mark when he came up on the green. Doesn't that drive you crazy when you play a nice club and nobody fixes their ball marks? Yeah. Looks like they held maneuvers on some of the greens <laughs> or something. Plus, they would save them money if they'd fix them and rake the buckers. Well, Greg Norman has seen a lot of the, the sands of Wingfoot today. There Another. you see a characteristic straight up and down deal. Come on. Nice shot. But he still has something for the par four, and they're still applauding for him. Crowds have been great here. The New York areas love the great white shark. Yeah, they really, they really have adopted both of these guys. Each, I think, in their own way, has the kind of personality that appeals to New Yorkers. A bit of showbiz there, consciously or unconsciously. Greg Norman, well, he just, he's done nothing, really, in the United States Open before either. But I suspect you'll be hearing a lot of both of these men in all of the major championships from now on. Norman at age 29, Fuzzy at age 32, should be moving into the, the golden part of their careers, don't you think? Certainly do, and especially Greg. He has done a lot of work on his golf, as Peter Ellis has been saying all week, and improved a lot of his play. Won his first tournament over here a few weeks ago and really got a real shot of confidence. But here's the man that's played confidently today. Left. Oh. He'd make one more birdie and, and par in the rest, the other holes. <laughs> he could have another 66. What do you say? Greg intimating that Fuzzy might be choking because he finally missed the putt. <laughs> Uh, they've been well, terrific at this isn't that great and it's just <laughs> yeah. the way they finished up yesterday and they were before they teed off this morning when jack talked to both of them they were giggling and teasing each other while they were waiting to be interviewed norman has not taken a club and slammed it into the ground or anything resembling it all the way around this long difficult afternoon for him now needing this for a par and i'm here to tell you you want to take a bite out of it sometimes yeah. especially that butter when it acted bad on him yeah. Oh boy, just lost his his timing on his putting. His, I mean, his speed has been so bad. Three right. bogeys in a row, and now he trails by nine. Mm. But he will be back. That you can be sure. And as you said, second place in the U.S. Open is not bad well if fuzzy should shoot 67 a day i you know that's a low round of the tournament in it or 60, no he had a 60, 66 right yeah. well he shot the low round of the tournament he's about to shoot the second low round that's right he could still make 66 got two holes not very birdieable holes normally but with no wind it could be done he'll be should be loose and relaxed he always looks loose and re relaxed but don't you imagine that's his way of trying to make himself. Of course, just yeah. like Trevino or when DeMerit played and uh, as Chi-Chi does uh, when he plays. And then you've got your more serious competitors who keep it in. Mm -hmm. Not others that aren't as demonstrative as Fuzzy or, uh, but everybody lets steam off in their own, ma own, own manner. That's right, one sometimes way or another. You, you, sometimes you do whistle that club in a bag to let off <laughs> a little steam. Yep, gallery still trailing along. 
good sized gallery for a Monday. Everybody had to go back to work, basically, you know. And uh, it was raining when the when the match began today. Although it's held off very well since then. Had been forecast of possible thunderstorms. Thank heaven they didn't come. 444 yard par four. What was that, Bob? You have any idea? Well, one of the ladies in charge of the ropes didn't quite see him, and she ran across the fairway just as Fuzzy was getting ready oh. to shoot. Ooh. Could have been tragic. No, he doesn't hit any grounders. He's no. Going, uh, well, she's a tall lady. He'd never come near her. He has played some smooth Look round, some easy round of golf, just driving in the fairway, walking along. David, you might remember he got a great break at the first hole. That's right, but that's the side to miss it on, that right side. Yeah, but it went right through that bush, too. You know, it could have been unplayable. That was and his tee shot on the his first. His tee shot on the first hole, and uh, when those things happen, Fuzzy has gotten a few breaks out here, believe me. Uh, not so many today, but he did get a lot of breaks in the, in the last two rounds. I'm a little right. And Norman? Just, of course, it would go off the of fairway. Lie doesn't look too bad, and now they're, they're touching up the portrait of Fuzzy. Touching it up for history. Back at Wingfoot for the playoff for the U.S. Open Championship. There's the story at Zeller by nine shots. Fuzzy walking up the 17th fairway talking with Jim Han, the president of the USGA, about going over and playing in the British Open and how he likes those courses and how he likes it here at Wingfoot because like those courses in Britain, you can hit those bump and run shots up you know, onto the green. You don't have to hit a wedge over a sand trap all the time. We do so much of that in American golf where you've got to carry the ball in. And, and Fuzzy's point is well taken and maybe that's why they pick a lot of, and you look back at the green and see exactly what he means. Right there. You have the opportunity to carry the ball in or if you're in a little bit of trouble, you can run it in if you're good enough. Bob Rosberg, what's the story? Well, there isn't much, Jack, no. <laughs> but Fuzzy's got a five iron out from about 180 yards. Just cruising along, thinking about his speech now. Making it look so easy, isn't he? Going right at the flag. Just a beautiful shot. He has played well, though, Rossi, don't you think? Well, he has, Dave, but he's got it up and down from two or three bunkers, and, uh, you know, he's, he's done everything right, but uh, like you said, Greg has made it awful easy for him. Fuzzy Zeller, you know, after looking at his open record, uh, it, it'd be very tough to think that he could win the open. <laughs> he is just, uh, and he's had problems with his back, uh, but I guess this new electronic thing, uh, these electrodes that he wears, he told me that they have really helped him. During a round of golf, but Lee Trevino and Chichi Rodriguez told him about it. And it's something that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. And he, he says it does. It sends out some sort of impulses or something and keeps you relaxed. No muscle spasms. Here was the putt uh, Fuzzy had on that first hole. That's where the second shot had put him from that right rough and there it was that's how the day began ladies and gentlemen of course Greg Norman put it in right on top of him and yes, we did. thought we were going to have really some dynamics here but this second hole about which we've told you uh, really was a pivotal point and now we look down at the 17th hole live with Norman's ball on the back fringe and fuzzy down front Quite a bit of break on the screen. There's almost a valley in it. A trough. That should come back the other way. Yes. Oh, oh he puts like he's been a member here for 20 years. Right. And strokes <laughs> keep you, give you very smooth <laughs> little uh, <laughs> weapon there. It's like a day in the beach, isn't it, huh? Yeah. Nine strokes. Yeah, you don't often see that, whether you're talking playoff or anything. I uh, watched a few playoffs 
mm -hmm. in my time, and this is as uh, big a lead as I can remember offhand. Kicking and screaming anyway, huh? Well, well isn't there time. always a shot that brings you back, Jack? Yeah. I don't care what kind of day you've had, and no matter who you are. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Take another look, because one of the brighter aspects of this day for just, Mr. Norman. Just watch where he has to start this ball to the right on that hill, and now watch it, and it starts picking up speed. That hole's not in the way. He's going to have about a six-footer. <laughs> Which is what happened to him at the second and third holes on twice that he three-putted there. Now we've come to the home hole. 448 yards. And there she sits, up by the clubhouse. And at last, this 1984 United States Open Championship will have been completed. Jack, I can tell you that Fuzzy, when he walks up that 18th hole, and sees all this and realizes and, you know it's coming to him more and more as he's having a little fun back here on the tee. Let's see if we can pick up what he's saying. I guess Greg is the honor first, but he will really reflect a lot on uh, Gary, a lot of friends, a lot of people that have helped him, uh, all the work that he's put into it. Not that he's done any more than Greg has or has any more or fewer friends, but really a lot of very warm pleasant thoughts come to you and you live with that the rest of your life of mm -hmm. course you're always the open champion from now on that's uh something you carry with you throughout your career and afterward can you press <laughs> <laughs> an aloha press perhaps well if they'd been playing in nassau craig would have lost all three that's ways right That's the way to go. I think we'll be seeing that look for yes. some time to come. He's uh, he's going to chew up a few people. Yes, he will. <laughs> That's really a good drive, David. You know, looking back on this match, I think if uh, there were legal betting here that Norman would have been the favorite uh, today. And in fact, uh, I talked to somebody out here that thought Norman would win after he was three shots down the second hole. You didn't let him get away, did you, Russell? <laughs> no, we didn't let him get away. Okay. <laughs> we got we got some property in Florida I want to let him have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 18th hole at Wingfoot. We'll be back for the closing moments in just a moment. I, I feel uh, a very good, a special feeling. I don't know, you can't put it into words how it feels. Listen to Fuzzy Zeller. Just talking really, along. Let's come back out here and call 18 more holes. A great feeling to come out and shoot. Uh, I wanted to shoot under par, and I did it. Beat this course again. Oh yeah. I want to shoot under par, and I did. That's a film yeah. cameraman walk along, walking alongside of him, not one of our people. Uh, there you see Norman on the left, Zeller on the right. And two different styles, both very powerful. And if we can stop them both at the top, you see Norman's more upright. Uh, Fuzzy's got his hands a lot lower, and they get to the top of the swing. You look at uh, both the wrists there. Very good, very strong, and similar. Now, as we go through the ball, if we can stop at impact, you'll see that no matter how a player takes it back, tall player, short player, whatever, when they get down into the hitting position, they are again going to look much the same. Look at the right foot on each one of them. Look at their arms, right arm below on both of them, left arm leading through, full turn through. Man, that is strength, power, I wish everyone that was watching could do it like that. Well, here's the last shot struck in anger, except for putting, he hopes. That's a three iron. It's going a little left, but I think it's going to catch the green. Yes, he did. And he's safely on the final green. He just wanted to try that putt that Norman made yesterday. <laughs> That's right. Almost the same place, except he's on the putting surface. Just a little two feet closer, maybe. Rossi, Frank Hannigan and I saw some guys trying that yesterday. 
after when we were walking in and they were coming within about 20 feet you know it's interesting david that they let the the pins uh stay in the same place today except for one hole i thought that was quite interesting it's not always the case in playoffs that's right well now greg norman maybe frank hannigan can get enlighten us a little on that this is a good looking shot oh. going right at the flag Oh, gorgeous shot. Well, a good one to end up with, at any rate, for Greg Norman. Frank Hennigan, the senior executive director of the USGA, is with us. Let me take the one side here, Frank, about 18 hole playoffs. People say, look, you get to the seventh game of the World Series, and it's all tied at the end of nine. You don't say, let's go home and sleep on it and play nine more tomorrow. You say, let's keep going until it's over. And, of course, that's true in every major golf championship except two in the world now. Well, but those are the two that really matter. Uh, yeah, but those are the two that really matter. It's an 18-hole it's an game. Uh, the way I see it, uh, after what happened yesterday afternoon in that last uh, marvelous hour, when it was uh, 18 holes was finished, everybody was drained. It was time then to stop and think what had happened and reflect on it and come back again today. I don't think it's written, we were disappointed today, but I don't think it's written everywhere that the conclusion of every event has to be a Bafo smash hit. Some of them are going to be disappointing. Well, I still think this is the valid way to do it. Okay. I've been looking through the record book, by the way, and I think there have been 23 playoffs scheduled for 18 holes in the history of the U.S. Open. This, if he holds the eight-shot lead, it'll be the biggest margin. Ah, now, returning the surrender towel of yesterday, Greg Norman said, okay, I give in, but with honor and with sportsmanship. I don't know that I've ever seen that, where the man congratulated his uh, opponent before he <laughs> actually finished. Right. Biggest previous margin in an 18-hole playoff, it looks like, was Dick Mayer beating Kerry Middlecoff at Inverness in 1957. Seven shots. Is no yet, of course. Now, remember that the flagstick is in the same place that it was yesterday, and that Fuzzy Zeller has almost the same putt that Greg Norman had yesterday, and here is that putt. Greg was about where Fuzzy's bag is, is on the side of the green today. Of course, I still don't believe he can make it. I've seen no. this putt how many times now? Five foot break. <laughs> uh, and right down the middle of the hole. But that was yesterday. Fuzzy looked on a bit discouraged at that point because he thought it was for a birdie. He thought he was going to have to match that birdie to tie. And that is as close to a moment of victory as Greg Norman was to come. But now here you see Fuzzy. You know, as Dave said, where his golf bag is is where just about where Greg was. So pretty much the same putt. A little bit shorter, but just not Just look much. how far he's aiming left, too. Yep. Now watch this. If he misses the hole or gets to the hole, this mm. is what would have happened maybe to Greg's butt yesterday. I, that is so slick going down that hill. They're still talking said, about probably it. Probably said, how'd you make that thing <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> uh. Okay. So he's got something to finish up there. Greg Norman has some opportunity to birdie here. Is he going to finish? He'll almost be in, in Fuzzy's line. This may be a time, of course, it doesn't matter. Now, what would happen now if Fuzzy just walked over and picked up Greg's ball and gave it to him? Or something? I mean, what, do you absolutely have to finish it out in stroke play, Frank? Yeah, you have to. As a matter of fact, that happened in the playoff. That's exactly what happened in the playoff in 1962. Arnold Palmer tried to concede the playoff to Jack <laughs> Nicklaus, and the uh, Joe Dyer, the USJ, then said, made him put back the ball and hold it yeah. out. 
There's no such thing as a concession. We're playing strokes right here, not match play. Right, well, I, that's, I'm glad you thought of all that. Round of 75 for Greg Norman. Now, Fuzzy Zeller with the par putt would give him a round of 67, the second best round in the championship. Tie for second best, and he had the best one of 66 last Friday, which seems such a long time ago. That's a terrific round of golf, and uh, I think 67 would have won, or no matter how well Greg would have played it. Look at this there. As they said, they'll still be friends after it's all over. That's the way it is. A hug for his caddy. By Frank Urban Zeller, age 32, of New Albany, Indiana. The United States Open champion for 1984. Boy, they started at 145 Eastern time and whipped around there fairly fast playing off for a national open. And that's the way golf ought to be played. Just go on and play. And they both did okay. I remember the first time I ever played the old course at St. Andrews, about 22 years ago, they had a sign on the first tee that said, a round of golf should take no more than three hours. It was implied that they'd not speak to you again. Now, those of you who would like to stay with us until 5.30 may certainly do so, and I hope a good many of you do, talking about the stations affiliated with the American Broadcasting Companies across the United States. However, if you'd prefer not to stay with us, your station, we're going to take a station break right now, and after that, you can pick up on your own. Well, Greg, a difference a day makes, huh? Definitely, Jack, but, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I just got off to a bad start today, and, uh, you know, that's the way golf goes if you, um, you know, especially on a situation like this where it's more or less cutthroat. And, you know, I, uh, you know, I tried my best. I was happy to be in the position. I'm very disappointed not to win, but uh, Fuzzy played great golf, and uh, he's a good champion. Did the putt at the second hole that Fuzzy sank uh, have any uh, physical effect on you? Uh, no, I think I was more careless on my own right there because I tried to make my putt. You know, it was something, it was only the second hole, and, uh, you know, when you downhill it was a speedy putt and uh, but you know I tried to make it and it was one thing that I shouldn't have done so it's something I learned well I know you're tremendously disappointed in not winning but to tie the US Open is quite a feat you know that don't you oh definitely yeah it's been a great thrill for me but uh, you know I'm gonna come back the next major championship I'll play I'm gonna go out and try and win it myself outright I think we're gonna see you chewing up quite a few people from here on in. <laughs> well I hope so Jack <laughs> uh, you're gonna be at the British Open Definitely, I'm going to play all the majors, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing there. Well, you might have lost the U.S. Open here at Wingfoot, but you won an awful lot of friends, Greg. Thank you very much, Jack. Hi, right, Jim. Okay. Those the words from Greg Norman after losing an 18-hole playoff to Fuzzy Zeller by eight strokes for the United States Open Golf Championship. As you see, they're setting up for the presentation here. It'll be interesting to see that. We don't too often have the opportunity to do that. Now Fuzzy Zeller with Jack. Well, Mr. Open Champion. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Uh, all I can say is that, uh, by golly, all the putts that uh, Greg made yesterday, I guess I made early starting the round out today, and I got off to a very good start and kind of stole it from him. Uh, and, I, you know, I did it yesterday, and I couldn't hold it, but today I held on. When did you first allow yourself the thought of what it might be like to be a U.S. Open Champion? After I hit my second shot on 18. I told my... Yeah, I, I told my caddy, I said, I, I kind of sloughed a little bit yesterday and laid back, and uh, today I didn't want to do that. I don't want to leave any doors open. I want to close them all up and lock them. Now, you going to have Frank Urban put on the trophy or Fuzzy? Oh, we'll have Fuzzy put on it. Put uh, Fuzzy. I am, uh, yes. <laughs> See, I mean, if you put Frank Urban, they wouldn't know who it was. <laughs> I, uh, so uh, we'll put Fuzzy on the trophy. Well, Fuzz, I was there when you won your first one at Andy Williams, the Torrey Pines and all that hail and cold weather. You won the Masters in a playoff. You win this. In, are you going to win all your majors in playoffs? Oh, Jack, I don't know. I tell you, it's it's all I can say is it's uh, very enjoyable to win golf tournaments, whether it's majors or uh, other tournaments. And if it takes a playoff, it, it makes it more exciting. I enjoy the hell out of it. I'll be very honest with you. Well, we're delighted. Uh, I think both of you were so good for the game. I think you uh, exemplified the great aspects of golf, the sportsmanship and the gentlemanness and the con conduct. We're very proud of both of you. And to you, our great congratulations. You're going to make a fine Thank United you. States. Thank you. Thank you very much. You bet. All right, Jim. Okay, Jack. Thank you very much. If there are any of you who don't, there, there are the names. Under Larry Nelson, we'll go, we now know, Fuzzy Zeller. 
in case there are any of you who don't know yet where the nickname comes from, has nothing to do with his, the character of his hair. His name is, as he said, Frank Urban Zeller, initials F-U-Z, and therefore Fuzzy. Fuzzy the winner by eight shots. In the United States Open Golf Championship playoff, the old clubhouse at Wingfoot, designed in the 1920s. A lot of those great stone buildings of an English character were built back in those flamboyant days. Uh, we might go back a little bit now because if ever a championship was decided in the first two holes, you could say that, that this was the one. Uh, there were 16 holes after that, but on the first hole, Fuzzy Zeller got a break on his tee shot. It could have come dead behind a, a low-hanging bush, uh, but it didn't, and he had this second shot. And he took advantage. This on the first hole. <clears throat> Just raining slightly at this point. Yeah, it only rained for a couple of holes. Right at the first hole. Yep. Greg, as you see, had a fine tee shot. Both started out with sweaters and discarded them after a bit. was earlier today if you've just joined us the playoff is actually over and he hit a shot right inside of him looked like we were going to have the battle we all hoped for that's what it looked like at this point and it looked more like it as you will see in a minute or so raining hard enough to require umbrellas way back then and there came the sweater off fuzzy just that quickly I was surprised about that because he's had back problems you know how he got that back problem playing high school basketball. I talked to a writer friend of his this morning. He went in for a layup when he was a junior in high school and got his legs cut out from under him. He was in the hospital for a few weeks. And like most kids, he came right back and played again, and he's never had the same back since then. Yeah. Backs and knees are pretty tough. Whew. A lot less contact here. This is mental <laughs> contact in this game. So Fuzzy essayed the problems. He faced with the putt on the first green. And put it in the middle of the cup. A birdie. So the first challenge had been thrown down. And it was over to you, Greg Norman. His putt just a little bit shorter than, than Fuzzy. They were almost the same. Well, he had finished up with a 40-footer yesterday that most people thought was impossible. He began his day today with this putt. How about uh, putts at one putts at 16, 17, and 18 yesterday? That's right. And continued where he left off on Sunday with this so that was it both men starting off with birdies on the first hole and we thought oh boy it's going to be this way all afternoon and it's going to be fun now this is on the second hole and Greg Norman had <clears throat> a very difficult situation he couldn't go for the green no and he played the correct shot he played a lofted club just out to try to get to the left you see him just catch that tree there. Out to the left on the short, shortish par four. And there it was in, in good position, but he lay two already on the par four hole. Now fuzzy. <coughs> a little strong with it. Sometimes when you have a light rain like this, the ball will kind of shoot just like it's in the rough, actually. Mm -hmm. Even though the fairways here have been perfect all week. I mean, the superintendent, Sherwood Moore, just prepared this course marvelously well. And that may have been a little bit of a problem for Greg on his third shot here. With a little fluid on the face of the club, which you pick up or on the ball, you don't get quite the spin that you would normally get. 
Of course, at this point, they're even. They both birdied number one, and Fuzzy's a long way from the hole. Yep. You're thinking, that? I feel Greg has got to be thinking at this point, I might be able to steal a par, and Fuzzy probably two putt from back there. Or if you're really lucky, might three putt. Yep. That's the way it looked at this point. <clears throat> now, the putt you're going to see in a minute of Fuzzy Zeller, we are told has been measured at 68 feet. Has been measured since then, of course. Nobody's run out there measuring it then. And if you haven't been with us all the way as we replay these early holes, take a look at this one. Reminiscent of Crenshaw at Augusta. Oh. <laughs> sure was on the tenth hole. Tenth hole, right. Now this, to me, and Greg said it earlier, Jim, was a major mental error that he is about to make here, that, that Greg is about to make here. Yes, yeah. that he's about to make. He thought he would try to make the four and only lose a stroke. He's downhill, it's very fast. Maybe he felt like he's putting so well that, uh, and you get yourself in that mood. You're, you're not quite, sometimes it's good to have a little fear in you. Yeah, but at this point, as you said, counting yesterday and today, he has made four one-putt greens in a row. Of varying in long <laughs> lengths. So he he's decided he'd go for this downhill, and you see what happened. You were indicating that he should have said, look, after well, this, there's 16 holes to go, two shots is not that many. It's easy for me to say, but I did think this at the time. Go ahead and make your five, because you've got a long way to go. Well, he said it in the interview. Yeah. He made a mistake. And he said, but I learned. Now, see what happened? Now, instead of loss, facing a loss of two strokes on this hole, he faced a loss of three if he missed that putt. That puts extra pressure on you. Now, you begin to think, well, maybe I should have laid up, or, or, or uh, uh, did I hit it too hard? Or You're not really thinking in a positive manner most of the time now. Should have just gone ahead and take your licking and keep on ticking. All yes. Right. <laughs> the distractions are have to creep in at this point, right? The, the mental aspect at this point, I, you know, only Greg could say for sure what it was, but I, I wonder how much he really had his mind on this next one. completely on it, I mean. Again, this is tape from earlier today. The playoff is over, and Zeller has won. Oh. There it was, and so on the second hole, he lost three strokes to his opponent, and that set the tone for the rest of the day from there on. His, his swing off the tee, his swing on the fairway wasn't the same as it had been in the first two holes. The final margin was eight strokes in favor of Fuzzy Zeller. He shot 67. Greg Norman shot 75. Presentation going on right now, but there are a few preliminary remarks. We'll be back for the actual presentation to Fuzzy Zeller. I think we might go back now and take a look at yesterday and the remarkable streak of birdies that Fuzzy Zeller put on on the front nine. He made four in a row, and at that point, it looked like that was wrapping up the championship for him right then. Turned out not to be the case, of course. This was fuzzy. At the third. The third hole. Par three. Yep. Hardest par three, played the hardest in the tournament. And that was birdie number one. As he was playing yesterday, head to head at that point with Hale Irwin. Looked like it was going to be those two, but Irwin faded. On the fourth hole, 460 yard par four, his second shot. Again, giving himself a chance. You look back and see how many marvelous shots all these guys have hit during the week. So, again, he had a birdie opportunity. And again, he made it. 
these, these are not those babies that look like they might have gone across the green, but they rattle around the back of the cup. These are beautiful putts. Great speed. Ah, speed, the key. Now on the fifth hole, he's had two birdies in a row. Now putting for a birdie on the 515-yard par five. Fifth hole, and slight touch of the side door, but only That's the left-hand side of the hole. Not quite as pure as, as the first two. So it was three in a row. And it had to be shaking the concentration of Hale Irwin at this point. And that's where her Hale went south there, I think, at the fifth hole. Sixth hole, 324 yard. Short par four. But a very fine little par four. Now he's left himself quite a putt there. <clears throat> well, they got a little bit of a break. Of course, with the wedge had spun back on the green, rolled further back than we saw, actually. This is the shortest of the four. <laughs> doesn't make it any easier and there it was four birdies in a row this was yesterday as Fuzzy Zeller played himself to a tremendous front nine eventually had to settle for a tie now we're back live again to the presentation at Wingfoot Greg Norman now as we said this man yesterday Appeared to be beaten at one point. On the back nine. But on the 14th hole, a 418 yard par four. Greg Norman, at three under at that point, had this for a birdie. And again, that perfect speed. No matter where it hits the hole, it's going to go in. At this point, he's three strokes behind, Jim, with five holes left. And a birdie was so important to get him going. But to me, the shot of the day was at 16. In the tall grass, he's downhill. And he played a shot that you just dream about. It's tough because you're coming, your ball is down in there. You're chipping downhill, trying to pitch it into a bank to kill it. I mean, you miss any one of those shots, you leave it right there, or you blow it way by the hole in the cinch bogey. It's fuzzy standing back in the fairway there. He's hit a bad drive at 16. Greg makes this one for a just a great a, re a rescue of a par. Not the last one he had yesterday. Again, this for a par on the 17th hole. After a bad drive, and he just had to pitch back the fairway and hit a six iron this far from the hole. And he saved it again. But he was saving the big one for the final hole. Pocket full of miracles. Okay, on the 18th hole, off the tee, as you'll see, he was fine. Fine. <laughs> You're a tough judge. This, this, is the one, this is the one John Schroeder, I think, said was 300 yards against the wind, right? Well, he absolutely crushed it right down the water system. I mean, you can't get much closer to the center of the fairway than that with the little uh, crown in the fairway bounce to the right, but the perfect position there. As for the second shot that you're going to see, however, Greg later said that the adrenaline was flowing so inside him that he just went too quick, too fast. Yeah. And he said he cut his swing off. He never yeah. felt that he got all the way back. And when you, no matter who you are, when you do that. Now look, that might have gone 100 yards to the right of the green or 50, 75. A fan caught it in the bleachers. That's what they were cheering for. They weren't cheering against Greg Norman, just like a foul ball in a baseball game. But he got a drop from there, which was a break for him, but not too much of a break because it was a very difficult shot coming up, wasn't it? He's still, you're dropping into tall grass. He's got to pitch up a steep bank there. And at this point, now you've got to get the ball on the green. You, you can't get too cute. Fuzz still has to play this hole, tough par four. Of course, he may have hit it a little too hard, but you've got to make sure and get it up there where you have an opportunity to make the next one. So at this point, with Zeller playing behind him, assuming that Zeller would make a par, he had to make this putt to force a playoff. And I don't think there was one person in a thousand knowledgeable golf people that thought he was going to make it. Well, if there was somebody that knew it, besides Greg, he said he knew he was going to make it. Look at that. <laughs> As long as we're around, we'll remember that one, and so will Fuzzy Zeller. 
And at that point, he thought it was for a birdie. Right. And he didn't find out from the gallery saying, no, that was for par, which changed, I'm sure, his feeling about what he had to do. And this is a great part, if, if we have time to run it. But on this particular night, Greg Norman must be thinking of the old words, right? Of all the words of tongue and pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. Fuzzy is. At this <laughs> point, <laughs> Fuzzy thought he was surrendering, yeah, right. not fully, because now we're live at the presentation. The runner-up. Half a world away from his home, he's among friends. The Australians are great people. Oh, yeah. A couple of times I've been down there, Jim, it's just, it's like being home. Yeah. A lot um, like Texas. Mr. President, the committee, Fuzzy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, I can honestly say I enjoy, really enjoyed my five days out here. And to your answer or comment, Fuzzy could have had a little bit to do with that yesterday. We didn't have to be here because it was my fault, Fuzzy. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed it. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, Fuzzy's going to make a great champion for the U.S. Open. Thank you very much. Before I get around to introducing our champion, there, there is another champion that I must draw to your attention. And that is, well, it's a combination, it's a team effort. It's the team effort that has produced this magnificent layout in magnificent condition this week. The co-superintendents Sherwood Moore and Bob Alonzi. I, mu I must tell you that only one stood up. Sherwood Moore, at least to the Wingfoot members, is better known to you because he's been here for some time. But unfortunately, Sherwood went into the hospital this morning, not unexpectedly. He had planned a minor operation tomorrow, and he's going on on schedule. Nothing to be concerned about, but in order to keep the schedule, and I suppose to keep the bed available for him, he went ahead and... He knew he had the course here in good shape, and he knew that Bob was really going to take care of it. One other thing, I, would, I assume, Bob, that somewhere in this vast group are your staff members. Where are they? Will you please put your hands up? You know, the, these are the... The men and women, and they are, it is a men and women group who maintain this under the direction of their superintendents. We thank them all from the bottom of our hearts for the, this great layout in such marvelous condition. Finally, I must, I must tell you a little byplay that took place on the, on the 18th tee. Uh, it was fairly apparent that uh, something spectacular had to take place. So as we went, <laughs> if it was going to be changed. So uh, as Greg went over to the 18th, he looked at Fuzzy and he said, double or nothing? <laughs> and to show you that Fuzzy isn't lost for words, and I think you've observed that once or twice this week, Fuzzy says, provided you hit your second shot where you hit it yesterday. <laughs> Fuzzy, I, I have a problem. Uh, we don't know at this stage, we don't know what we're supposed to put on this trophy because I don't know you by any other name than Fuzzy. I hope you'll enlighten me as to what is, should go on it before you leave here today. I've had the opportunity to referee the last three rounds of Fuzzy Zellers, and I can tell you that seldom have I seen a player so on his stick 
as fuzzy was at least for the last three days. And it's, it was a delight to watch him get stronger and stronger as he went on right on up through 18. Fuzzy, congratulations, you, were, you are a spectacular champion. Thank you, Jim. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I have just, uh, I just told Jim, I think we ought to stick with Fuzzy on the trophy. It's only appropriate. Right? <laughs> it's for sure one thing. It'll be the only Fuzzy on there, I guarantee you. Uh, <laughs> Felix and Ed, people of the USGA and the people in the stands, and uh, I, I didn't forget you. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, my week here in New York has been a one that I will never forget. <laughs> and Mr. Norman, I want to thank you very much for leaving your golf game here yesterday. Buddy, I just... Uh... Oh. Anyway, I want to make this short and sweet, but again, thanks to everybody that had anything to do with the tournament. It's been a, a marvelous week, and thanks to the man upstairs for holding off the rain for us. Thank you very much. And so it is totally official that Frank Urban Zeller of Indiana is the 1984 United States Open Golf Champion. Time now for autographs, a little bit later, time for enjoyment. We heard him say to somebody as he was walking up the vast fairway, he's probably going to take three weeks off at this point, and that's certainly well earned, Dave. And he'll also, tonight, I'm sure, no matter how much fun you have, when you finally get yourself where you go to sleep, whether he's going to, I don't know what his plans are to go back home right now or, or tomorrow or what. The, the reflections that he'll have as to what he's done and that trophy that, that I'm sure you know, every golfer dreams of getting is finally his. Uh, and you look at the names on that trophy and how far back that goes and all the people that have put something into golf as Fuzzy has put into golf too uh, and will continue to do so. Um, that will give you a thrill and a chill and you'll look back too over the years and you'll say how in the world did I hit that shot I would hate to ever have to do that again I mean as as it recedes a little bit from the present moment it's really I wish everyone could have the thrill that Fuzzy Zeller has now or to win a major championship there's nothing quite like it in my life I'm sure what you're thinking in your mind is when you looked at the trophy for the PGA championship uh -huh. and when you saw the names of Walter Hagen and people like that and as you say he'll see those names Willie Anderson Robert T. Jones, Jr., Ben Hogan, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, and then look at Fuzzy Zeller, and that has to really make it sink in. Oh, you, all your life. I mean, every time you pass by that trophy, whether you get to keep it, I mean, you keep it for the year, you better win it again, but it's there from now on. And what does Greg Norman have to do? Does he have to have to rally his morale a little bit and make sure that today doesn't stick in his mind longer than yesterday? I think he said it better than, than uh, I could in that he learned something at the second hole. He learned something from the day. It wasn't close from then on. So it's not a heartbreaking loss as if he had shot 68 and lost. He's been there. It's got to give him more confidence. I'm sure he's looking forward to the British Open at St. Andrews where we'll see him again. And uh, his turn's coming, 29 years old, strong player. Uh, listen, his time is coming, and he'll be holding up a cup like that before too long. But this day belongs to Fuzzy Zeller. The margin of victory, eight strokes, is the largest mo margin in a playoff for the U.S. Open that was scheduled for 18 holes. The record previously of seven strokes was Dick Mayer over Kerry Middlecoff at Inverness a long time ago. It's been a great week that we've had at the Wingfoot Golf Club, all of us. We thank everybody involved with the tournament, everybody involved with the club who have been so kind and so helpful to those of us of ABC Sports. As for you, Dave, championship was produced by Chuck Howard and directed by Terry.
associate producers, Ben Harvey and Bob Rossberg, Jr. The associate director was Jack Graham. This ABC Sports exclusive has been... of quality automobiles for 1984 from front wheel drive cars to three distinct luxury models Olympic Games and proud sponsor of the United States Olympic team. The blimp was provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Again, the winner, Fuzzy Zeller. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. This year, the Olympic tradition continues.